Hey, what's up? Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 4, Episode 8. Today we're talking about Street Fighter from 1994, directed by Steven D'Souza. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor Giles, a war criminal, McGraw. I'm Kieran. Welcome to the dumpster. But why? Why do they still call me a warlord? And mad? All I want to do is to create the perfect genetic soldier. Not for power, not for evil, but for good. Carlos Blanca will be the first of many. They shall march out of my laboratory and sweep away every adversary, every creed, every nation until the very planet is in the loving grip of the Pax Bisonica. And then peace will reign in the world. And all humanity shall bow to me in humble gratitude. Hi, Kieran. Hey. Just Kieran? It's just Kieran. Yeah, I just go by Kieran. It's like uh it's like Madonna. Oh yeah, you're you're like <laughs> Prince, man. The artist formerly known as Kieran. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was I was never an artist. <laughs> <laughs> this is our final episode for Super Combat Fighter Double Dumpster Edition Turbo, and we got motherfucking Street Fighter we're talking about today, and I can't wait. We also have Kieran as our guest, um, and Kieran, you want to tell us uh, and the listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, sure. My name is Kieran. I, I work at uh, on Cinemassacre. I am an editor, uh, a co-writer, and uh, uh, play. You know, I play video games and things like that, and I also stream on Twitch. Awesome, man. You got any projects kicking up or what's cooking? Where I just I, I mostly work on the angry video game nerd stuff. That's about all I do. Uh, I have a cartoon that I want to make, but it probably won't be out for four years because I I'm not I'm never gonna have time to do it, especially with Resident Evil Eight coming out. Yeah, <laughs> it looks pretty great. Yeah, I can't wait. Sign me up. Sign me up for some big vampire lady. Yeah, she can stalk you. Yes, please. Yes. All day. Yeah, apparently she has some kind of claw uh, uh, attack that I saw online. That's okay. I'm pretty excited about that. I started replaying 7 just in prep for it, and I was like, yeah, now I remember why I never replayed this, because fuck this guy chasing me around this house while I'm trying to solve puzzles. <laughs> oh, it's great, dude. I actually just started it, like, a couple months ago, and I got to the first Jack Baker chase. I was like, fuck this for the <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, I, I love the 7th game. I had such a fun time playing that one. Oh, it's a fucking blast. It's really good. It's very good and very cool, but it, it stresses me the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. I love the twist at the end where mm. you find out uh, what that old lady in the wheelchair was all about. <laughs> uh, I guess I won't spoil it for anyone that's going through now, but it's kind of cool. I don't know if it's the return to form that I wanted, but I was happy with how they did it, right? Yes. After the fiasco, that was fucking six. Whoa. Yeah, five and six were... Honestly, like two games that I well, like, I just I actually just played six for the first ever time a few months ago. Oh, dude, it's bad. I don't like it. I didn't mind it, but it's stupid. It's so it's like a B movie. Yeah. Don't you like your Resident Evil games to be like seven games in one and none of them are good? <laughs> <laughs> I was so bummed. Like by the time, you know, you're playing as Leon and by the time you're like getting into him, you're like, oh, this is neat. And then it just switches. And you're like, oh, fuck. And then it's, you know, I don't know. I I'm just wasn't a fan. I, I only I started as Chris and I, I only got a little bit into it. 
Uh, but I will say it's better than five and it's better than Code Veronica and zero, in my opinion. Oh, I like Code Veronica a lot. People tell me all the time, like, oh, Code Veronica is my favorite. I hate that game. I also hate that game. I I hate it. <laughs> well, not not my favorite, but it's definitely a, a good one. Uh, what, are you, what are you playing now, Kieran? What are you streaming lately? I th you told me, but tell the people. I was just playing, uh, well, probably at this time, like, I, I will have finished Metal Gear Solid. I was playing, like, um all the Resident Evil games. I was playing the original two and three, and then I played the remakes of two and three. I played four. I play a lot of like PlayStation one and up, and I play some new stuff. Oh, that's sick, dude. Well, you're doing the Lord's work. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's uh, what's, what's your handle on uh, Twitch so people can uh, jump on your stream? I You can find me at uh, twitch.tv slash Kiern. It's uh, K-I five e's and then r n so it's k i e e e e e r n so uh apparently you're you're like the biggest street fighter fan that we know is this correct the movie probably yeah no easily yeah yeah i i have a copy of the movie on every uh one of each of every media that it is on i have the original vhs my dad got me in in like 1990 something i have it on dvd Laser disc, uh, Blu ray. I have the Steelbook Blu ray. That's wonderful. <laughs> I have uh, the comic book promo that's still in the packaging. Oh, that's awesome. I have uh, the Sega Saturn game. I have the Japanese PlayStation game. I have, uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, I have animation cells from the cartoon that was like a sequel to the movie, kind of. It was uh, a Saturday morning. Street Fighter cartoon. Oh uh, <laughs> yes, I remember this. And I have uh, I have a really sweet uh, animation cell full body of uh, Kenya Sawada. It's pretty awesome. Oh yeah, man! I think you showed me that. That's fucking sick. Yeah, and I have a background Ryu one that's like meant for like, you know, he's like in the background, so he's all tiny and he's just kind of <laughs> standing there. <laughs> You also have a bunch of action figures too. Oh, I have, yeah, I have the Jean Claude Van Damme like doll, <laughs> the the Street Fighter the movie GI Joe like full size doll, like the uh, the twelve inch figure. Hell yeah, man! I have that, and um, I'm trying to think. I think I might have other stuff. Well, what we uh, we dug out of the uh, the old retail reviews uh, studio was the uh, the fucking Rock'em Sock'em. What? Oh yeah, I have yeah, but that would that's not really from the movie though. It's a, it's just a um, it's. I it's still cool. It's Ryu and Guile, uh, but they look awful. I like to say that they're two uh, cosplayers at a convention that got drunk, and they're just kicking each other in the shins. Oh, my God. I bet you're right. Yeah, that's not movie. You're right. Oh, I also have a uh, an actual autographed Jean-Claude Van Damme trading card. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. Wait, hold on. Is it a Guile card or is it just a Jean-Claude Van Damme card? <laughs> it's Jean-Claude Van Damme as Guile. I'm holding it right now, actually. Okay. Oh, that's amazing. And it has like a certificate of uh, of, of authenticity. I forgot to also, I have a Bison dollar. Oh, oh man. I have a an actual uh, an actual movie Bison dollar. It was, they, you know, they printed out like thousands of them and someone sells them hey man it's worth as much as five british pounds yeah and it's actually a hundred one so it's 500 british pounds <laughs> well, there you go <laughs> now do you think that was one of the ones that miguel nunez jr or west studi handled though <laughs> it it might be like it, it's probably one of the ones that was like in the uh the briefcase oh yeah yeah in the one scene but it's you know it's one of i don't know however many i guess who, someone must have bought like movie props and like you know they're pretty much like, oh shit, I could, and not for anything, but it, I paid uh, 40, or I didn't pay anything for it. A friend of mine sent it to me, but it was $30. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. I thought it'd be way, I thought it'd be more than that, to be honest. I think, I think actually, maybe it's a five. No, I think it's a hundred bison dollars on the front. I haven't seen it in a minute, but. Somebody bought the briefcase and was like, oh, the, that briefcase is cool. And then they open it up and they find out that there's fucking bison <laughs> bucks in it. Yeah. The thing is, they're just literally pieces of paper printed with it on there like uh they look you know they're off center sometimes and stuff like that so, so there was there was like a pa like cutting it off on on the side on the set with one of those huge like fucking cleaver cutters yeah 
Oh yeah, there we go. It was a hundred bison dollars. So technically that's five hundred British pounds, but I, I it was only thirty dollars. Oh man, use it at the food court. Yeah, it's a steal. Use it at that uh bisonopolis uh in bisonopolis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wonder how much uh, bison bucks are worth in 2021 with the inflation rates and everything. <laughs> yeah, if you think about it, I actually, you know what? I can I can pull that up. Oh my! <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. I'll, I'll I will. Uh... My bison buck conversion calculator. <laughs> Walk here and looks that up. You guys had mentioned in the last episode, Joe and Connor, that uh, Mortal Kombat was the movie that you guys kind of grew up with. Obviously, the games too, but. Uh... Weirdly enough, this is the movie that I grew up with and played the games of uh, as a child, as a young boy. Oh, yeah, man. Both, baby. Uh, I didn't really get to watch Mortal Kombat too much. Again, I think I watched it at a friend's house and saw, like, scenes here and there, but never really sat down and uh, watched the whole thing until uh, a couple years ago. And uh, this movie, for some reason, just was always on the TV. I don't know if it was just aired a lot <laughs> or or if we actually had a copy. I honestly don't remember. But this was constantly on rotation in my house. Yeah, we definitely, uh, I mean, I definitely had the tape. Like, we bought it when it came out. But I remember this being on, like, USA a lot. Yeah, it showed on TV all the time. Yeah. Before we before we get, like, su super, super into it, I remember playing Street Fighter 2 for Super Nintendo. Or was it, I think it was Genesis. No, it was Genesis. Champion Edition? Yeah. Street, street Fighter 2 Champion. Not even Super Street Fighter. Um, <laughs> like back when I we live we used to live in a condo and I used to uh play with the this kid across the street and he had it. Um, and I think that Jesus Christ that was even before Mortal Kombat had come out, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I I think Champion Edition might have come out around the same time, right? Like the, we're right in the pocket there in our in arcades at least. Like uh, our you know Mortal Kombat didn't come out on consoles until like a couple like a year after i think or two years after right 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 but uh i think it was in arcades by the time because that's actually the thing i i played all those games in the arcade that's where i first played street fighter that's where i first played mortal Kombat, and i remember champion edition was out and it was popular and then all of a sudden no one was playing it and i was like why isn't it nobody's playing street fighter like i can get on it and then i looked and everyone was playing like there was a crowd around Mortal Kombat and I was like, <laughs> I think I was like six or seven or something like that. No, I was probably like five or six actually. And I remember like playing Mortal Kombat for the first time and just getting my ass handed to me. <laughs> oh yeah. We've all been there. Yeah. I never made it out to the arcades as a young kid. Like I always, I played Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter like on home consoles almost exclusively until I was a little older. Um, and, the, you know, and then you can go to, like, down to the boardwalk and shit like that, because I grew up in, like, Central Jersey and, like, down by Seaside and shit like that. So that's where access to that was for me. Gotcha. I remember seeing Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 for the first time on an arcade machine and being just mesmerized by it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Just real quick, uh, this is, th this is, this movie is based on Street Fighter 2. Mm, is it? <laughs> well, well, <laughs> that's what it says in the fucking credits anyway. It's based on the characters from Street Fighter 2, I think, more than anything, but oh, Right. It, yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not the game. The only one missing really is Faye Long, right? Well, there's a thing about that. I guess I don't know if you guys want to get into the lore yet or or if you want to work up to that, but uh originally I believe uh Sawada was supposed to play Faye Long. I could see it. That's what that's why I thought he was when I was a kid. So <laughs> I was like, why do they call him Sawada? Yeah, they the thing was I think what it was was like uh, basically they thought so our uh, Fei Long was too generic of a character, mm. so they just phased him out and made him Sawada. But Sawada was the guy that they wanted to be the main character. Gotcha. But he was a horrible actor and he couldn't speak almost any English. No, <laughs> you're kidding me. Yeah. No wonder we get that gem of a scene later that we'll get to. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, where it's like Colonel, <laughs> <laughs> the pilot would have to be. Out of his mind. So, was it the what, the first Street Fighter was for what? Wasn't it for like Neo Geo or some shit? Just arcade. Was it just arcade? The first Street Fighter? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It never. Oh, it, it also came out on the uh, the um, Turbo Graphics CD. Turbo Graphics. That's what it was. It was, but it was called Fighting Street. <laughs> <laughs> just get on the ground, start punching the fucking pavement. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a street that fights you. <laughs> oh my god, that's a scary thought. That's like some HP Lovecraft or like Wes Craven <laughs> shit. It's an episode of Doom Patrol. Oh, there you go. You know, actually, uh, you ever hear the whole thing about like the uh, the Street Fighter machines? Originally, uh, they had um, 
two buttons and depending on how hard you hit the button right was how hard it would hit in the game but people were destroying them yes <laughs> oh man All right so they had they eventually just made the six button thing because so many like people would buy these like street fighter machines put them in their arcade and they'd be broken in like two weeks <laughs> Are they like super rare? I would assume, right? I, I, the, in Japan, they still have them in places. I've never seen an actual like the 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 straight up button one. But I did play in uh in an arcade. I played Street Fighter One, but I played it way after I had already played Street Fighter Two. So when I saw it, I was like, "Whoa, Street Fighter, cool, let's play it." And then I was like playing it. I'm like, "This isn't fucking Street Fighter. What the hell is this shit? This is this sucks." <laughs> <laughs> This isn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you play as uh, Ryu, right? And you just like walk around like yeah. fighting just like CPUs. If you're if you're player one, you're Ryu. If you're player two, you're Ken. And uh, you can only be Ryu or Ken. Right. And then you fight other people. Like there are uh, like Mike is actually Balrog. Who it, there's a whole weird thing about that. Gotcha. M Bison was originally his name because he was Mike Bison. But then they were afraid Nintendo was going to sue them because of Mike Tyson, uh, Mike Tyson's punch out, because they technically had the rights to have Mike Tyson's likeness. Right. So they changed M. Bison to the boss, even though his name was Vega, and Balrog, uh, who is Vega, as we know, it's all confusing. It's a big mess. Oh, man, I need to I need the breakdown of that shit. There's a bunch of drama regarding those three big names. And like when you come over here, they're entirely different. It's just between Vega, Bison and Balrog. So Bison in, in Japan is Vega. Vega is Balrog and Balrog is M. Bison. Right. And they changed all around. That's why, like, if you watch like fighting tournaments, they call them claw dictator and boxer. Exactly. Because it's it's an easy way to get around because if you say like, oh, Vega, but it's like, you know, it might be confusing to Japanese viewers, to American viewers, all that stuff. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And especially people that are that baked into it, they know all the like original names I would have to imagine. Yeah. Well, Street Fighter, so Street Fighter 2 is like the, the, the granddaddy of these fighting games. Oh, yeah. Basically, yeah. Yeah, it introduced, like, the combo system. That was, like, the first game that did that shit. Yeah, which was a glitch, actually, originally. Was it really? Yeah, it wasn't intended. It was, uh, they had the idea where you punch the guy and you're supposed to knock back, but then when they realized that they could keep hitting, mm -hmm. they were like, hey, this is actually pretty cool and it sets us aside from other games. So they inv they basically, the, the combo system was a mistake that they just never corrected. That's fucking crazy. They accidentally created a genre. Yeah. Uh, dude, and Yoko uh, Yoko Shimomura's uh, uh, score is just fucking amazing. Like, I love the Street Fighter II uh, score. Yes. Oh, my God. Any, I mean, honestly, like, I that was the thing was when I was a kid, the first time I ever played Street Fighter II, I heard Guile's song, and it and it blew me away. I, I remember just wanting to hear Guile's song all the time. That is still my favorite. I was... Literally just humming it, yeah. It's incredible. All the music in Street Fighter 2, honestly, Capcom, I feel like, with their art team, their music team, are, are barn on some of the greatest in video games. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, dude. Uh, Yoshishiki Akamoto produced it, who's the man behind uh, Gyrus and Final Fight. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's the thing, too, is the guys who made Final Fight are the guys who were made who made Street Fighter 2. The guys who made Street Fighter 1 left and made Fatal Fury. Oh, okay. I was going to say earlier... That's why they play completely different. I was going to say earlier, I did actually get the chance to play Street Fighter 1 on an arcade machine, and my only recollection of it is it was hard as fuck. <laughs> Yeah, it's really hard. It's hard. It, you, it's super hard to do any special moves. Yeah, uh, they're weird. <laughs> uh, Sagat is almost impossible if you don't cheese the game. Oh man! So just a couple, of, just a couple of sides before we get rolling into this. Um, so Stephen Stephen De Souza, the director of this, this fucking guy. He wrote Die Hard and Commando yeah. and 48 Hours and The Fucking Running Man and Bad Dreams. Yep. And then he does Beverly Hills Cop 3 Oof. and Judge Dredd what? and Street Fighter. <laughs> you know, I was going to say everybody gets one, but then you're like, you, named, you just kept naming movies. <laughs> so that's the thing. He wrote all of those. And then 
he just he directed Street Fighter. But the thing is, you got to also understand he had Capcom breathing down his neck. He had like, oh, sure. You know, they they're and they're like, you have to have all 16 characters because at this point, Super is out. So you have to have everybody. I was going to ask you about that because I was like, motherfucking T-Hawk is in this. I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. Greg Rainwater. For no reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, I, I don't know if you guys know the whole story about Greg Rainwater. No. So, um, he played T-Hawk. Is he actually native? That was what I couldn't actually confirm. I, I believe he is, because his name is Greg Rainwater, and he's actually in, like, other, um... I think the only other stuff he really did were, like, uh, Native American, like, soap operas. Okay. Oh, so that makes sense. He he played T-Hawk, and at the end of the movie, you know, they're like, hey, everybody has to come in and shoot green screen footage. And he just got his check and bounced, and no one ever saw him again. <laughs> oh, shit. He just disappeared. Took his money, said, like, fuck you guys, and just never came back. Took his bison bucks and hit the, sh hit the bricks? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. So he's the only one who's not in the game. Even, uh, I, no, Dalsim isn't either, but he's featured in something. He has, like, at least publicity stills and stuff like that, but Greg Rainwater left after everything. Yeah, and, like, I know the Guile stuff with him in that game, like, some of his animations were done by a stunt double because, like, Van Damme apparently came in and filmed most of it, and then was just like, yeah, nah, and just never, also just never came back. Also, uh, Bison is not in the, uh, like, uh, Raul Julia is not, he, his likeness is in the game, but it's his uh, stunt double who did all the motion, uh, like, the uh, digitization stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, we, we kind of glossed over that. Uh, so, yeah, so, th so Street Fighter, the movie, the game is a thing. <laughs> Oh, man. And it, it, it plays almost like Mortal Kombat. Like, it's it's stylized in the same way. Yeah. Definitely chasing that money, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. I watched, like, arcade playthroughs of it, and it's fucking bonkers. Especially when Akuma shows up. You're like, oh, okay. The arcade and the home console port are completely different games. Yes. One is significantly worse, isn't it? Yeah, the arcade one, it, it's not, like, super terrible. I play it, and it's funny. But uh, pretty much when it came out, you know, by that time, you know, Street Fighter Alpha was out and like Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 was out and all that stuff. So Capcom was like, yeah, we can't like this is awful. <laughs> and they and they took it. They took the digitized stuff and they remade it and pretty much just put it onto the uh, the Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo engine. And that's what the home console port is. Gotcha. The The Japanese version is actually called Street Fighter Real Battle on Film. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the name of it. It's weird. I like that one better, to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah. And the, the movie one is made by this company called Incredible Technologies, and they're known for uh, Golden Tea games. Like you do. R yeah. Did they do the fucking Batman Forever game? I don't know. They did do... Uh, I don't know if you ever played Time Killers. That sounds familiar. It's a game where it's... It, it was a Mortal Kombat ripoff, and you play as, like, dudes from different times, and you can cut off each other's limbs and stuff like that. I have played Time Killers, and I have played Bloodstorm. They're pretty much the same, but yeah. Yeah, Bloodstorm is, the, is like, the unofficial sequel to Time Killers, basically. That's them. They're both pretty bad, <laughs> but they have that allure of, like, having absolutely disgusting finishing moves and features. Yeah, Time Killers was just, like, when you were in the arcade and you went from seeing Mortal Kombat and then you see Time Killers and you're able to just cut a guy's arm off in the middle of the round and they keep fighting. Oh, man, I like that. That was enough to keep you, like, looking at it. And then the fatalities were just hit all the buttons at once. <laughs> And that's how you do a fatality. That's like fucking Clay Fighter, man. Yeah. I've done a Claytality one time in my whole life. A Claytality. Oh, you got you had to have the printouts, man. You don't fuck around with that. You gotta see uh yeah. what was his name? Big fat sumo santa fucking <laughs> <laughs> Booger Man was in there, the sixty four version. Yeah. Oh, was that fucking doctor guy, the mad scientist guy? And I just remember like playing it and just mashing a bunch of buttons and I somehow performed one and I was so fucking happy. That was the first and only time that ever happened. I always liked to blob. Oh, you and me, buddy. I was a bad Mr. Frosty player. Yeah, I played as Mr. Frosty too. Man, those games are terrible but I played a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man. They, they they have tremendous character and characters. Like, there's a cool energy to those games. That's kind of what I think people remember them for. What was it? C2? Clay Fighter 2? Yeah, C2. Judgment Clay. I was in that, uh, what's it called, the Blockbuster tournament, 
And that was one of the games that you had to play. Oh, that's awesome, man. That was the only one I did well at. <laughs> it was Clay Fight? What was the other games? It was Sonic 3, which I couldn't figure out how to get up the tree part in Sonic 3. I, I kept messing up. And then uh, it was this racing game, like an F1 Formula One type racing game for Sega Genesis. Gotcha. So this fucking movie spawns uh, a, a, a re. They tried to reboot it with Chun Li, the legend of Chun Li. Oh boy. Oh my god. Which comes up a lot on this fucking show. I don't know if you just want to briefly discuss that. I know you. <laughs> well, it, it's it's part of the Smallville black hole. <laughs> <laughs> With Kristen Kruick. Yeah. And uh, and and Chris Klein, which I don't know if you've ever seen the video of him auditioning for Mamma Mia. No. <laughs> what? Oh. So so Chris Klein uh, auditioned for Mamma Mia, and it's it's really hilarious. Uh, if you get a chance, just type in Chris Klein Mamma Mia audition. It's a it, it's it's perfection. <laughs> Chef's kiss. It's just so good. I got to see some of that shit. I was going to say, is is it better than his Charlie performance? Because he's hilarious in that movie. Oh, my God. He's so ridiculous as Charlie. <laughs> there, there's the one scene where he's, like, screaming at Chun-Li. Like, there, I think there's a helicopter in the background. And he's just yelling in her face the whole scene. It's it's one of my favorite scenes of the whole movie. When he, when he jumps away from the explosion... That's all digital. <laughs> <laughs> I still have not seen it, but I. What did you say, Connor? Fucking Bison is a Scotsman, a uh, real estate agent. He's a like a Scottish like I don't know property owner, or some <laughs> shit who has like power he got from like killing his his like unborn child. I don't even fucking know. It's ridiculous. Who the hell is that actor? Uh, That's Neil McDonough. He is excellent not as bison <laughs> no he's terrible but like uh, my, my i like him for uh ravenous and uh his work in the cwdc stuff he's fantastic as damien dark oh he's in ravenous i fucking love ravenous yeah he's who screams in the pond for no reason after like a quick cut they're just like this is this general and he's like <laughs> uh it also spawned assassin's fist have any of you seen that no i i've heard it's great and i've never watched it really it's a live action i believe it's like ryu and ken yeah it's a ryu and Ken movie. I gotta check it out. I didn't even know it existed until today, so I need to check it out. I didn't know it existed until right now. Yeah, and that's the thing. Assassin's Fist is the style of Shotokan karate that they do on Satsuken. Oh, that sounds fucking sick, dude. Yeah. I have very, very fond memories, and I hold this movie in a special place uh, for Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. That movie yeah. fucking rules. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I have it on tape. I, I rewatched the Chung Lee and Vega fight the other day. It's just so good. It's like a good like five minute fight, and I love the attention of like Guile. It's like, oh, is Guile gonna help her or not? Or is she gonna be able to take care of this before he does? And she like stomps his ass right as Guile gets in the room. God, that fight is so good. Yeah. When she like, I love when she does that where she steps on his face and twists her foot. Yes, and it just <laughs> like I, I love that part. I have it on tape. I got the one. It's the unrated one where you see Chun Li's boobs. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that was the one I rented from A to Z Video in Jersey a long time ago. And they forgot to put that eighteen plus sticker on there, man. Yeah, not for children. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right next to the fucking Legend of the Overfiend. <laughs> I have a uh, Wicked City with that sticker on it. Oh, that's oh man! I just rewatched that not too long ago. I fucking love that flick. Yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, uh, Kieran, as our guest, would you pl would you like to plot crunch this film? Yes. Um. So M Bison, the evil warlord, and uh, you know, is has taken a bunch of hostages and is given the Allied Nations seventy two hours to pay him twenty billion dollars, or he will kill all of the hostages. So General or uh, Colonel William Guile and his his ragtag group of uh, compatriots decide that they're going to stop him with the help of a few uh, unsavory characters like Ken and Ryu and uh, the help of Chun Li, a GNT reporter, and her crew of E Honda and Balrog, the cameraman. And they go on a bunch of wacky adventures. <laughs> they sure do. Yeah. <laughs> Edward Honda, by the way. Yeah. Ed Edmund. Oh, right. <laughs> Think about this for a second. Guile's name is Bill Guile. Yeah. Billy Guile. <laughs> <laughs> 
we have a Samoan E Honda. Ah, <laughs> yep. Why? It is very stupid. And I, by the end of the movie, I, I, I've seen this movie a ton of times, but that was one thing that constantly annoyed me. And at the end, I was like, eh. He's actually, like, I kind of like the guy that plays him. It's just as stupid at the same time. To be fair, wasn't Yokozuna Hawaiian, too? Yeah, he's, like, The Rock's, like, uncle or some shit. <laughs> yes. He was, yeah, he's Simone as well. He's part of that big wrestling dynasty. Well, there's a line that they say where they're like, uh, he's like, you're Edmund Honda. You almost made Yokozuna. And I was like, whoa, he was almost Yokozuna in the WWF? That's what I thought. Because <laughs> I didn't know that was like a thing. I, I thought it was just Yokozuna was Yokozuna. I didn't know that, you know? Is it like some kind of stature in the sumo? Oh, it's like the top, top level. Oh, really? You have to win like 10 straight tournaments to, or 10 straight matches. I don't know what it is. It, it's like a thing. I feel like an idiot now. It's a rank. The last one I remember that was kind of like, a, I guess, a moderately public figure was Akebono, who had like a short stint in WWE and is wrestling in like New Japan right now or something. Yeah. I will say I do appreciate that they didn't pretend like he was actually Japanese. They're just like, no, he's just, he's Samoan. He's wearing a Hawaiian shirt most of the movie. Well, what's his name too? I mean, uh, Sagat is played by Wes Studi and he's uh, Native American, I believe. Yeah, I thought that, I always go back to him. Like whenever I think of Sagat in like a movie format, I mean, I guess, who else would I think of? But, like, I think of West Studi every time. Yeah. And it's, like, it's just such a weird casting on this rewatch where it's, like, he is good in this movie, but the whole time I'm, like, why is he not, like, Asian? Yeah. Well, uh, he's kind of perfect as to God, though. And... <sighs> He is, but also, like, there's this thing in my head where, like, when I visualize Sagat, I visualize, like, this triangle of a man who's just, like, 75 feet of shoulders. Yeah. That's, well, yeah, that too. And then just gets smaller as you go to his legs, and, like, West Dude is great, but he's not that. He's not eight feet tall like Sagat is. No. He's good in this movie. He plays a character that was written for him very well, but I just wish we did get, like, something closer to that real character because he is one of my favorite uh, villains in the series, and he's fun to play as in the game. For you know, not that it matters for the movie, but it was just something that I would have liked to see. I wasn't sure of his eth ethnicity, but now that now that you mention it, yeah, I can totally see the Native American. I'm not sure exactly uh, uh, w w what nationality he is, but uh, um, I looked it up earlier. I think he's oh, sh I think he's Cherokee, but let me double check that. Gotcha. Yeah, I know. Um, I follow him on Twitter, and he got some award too recently because I follow the whole cast of Street Fighter the movie. Oh, <laughs> except for except for grandel bush i stopped following him <laughs> because he burned me oh no wait who's that grandel bush is uh is actually so he's balrog okay uh and he's also in Die Hard. he plays one of the uh the fbi agents uh john you know it's like johnson and johnson i believe oh my god he does mm -hmm. and he's also in demolition man yeah and uh you know we always Every time we do a movie where Grandel Bush was in there, when we did rental reviews back in the day, and back in the day, I mean like two years ago, <laughs> <laughs> the, the far off year. But we would, I would always make it a, you know, a point to mention Grandel Bush. So I found him on Twitter, and he has like a hundred something followers. And I messaged him. I'm like, hey, are you actually Grandel Bush? And he was like, last time I checked, and I was like. Hey, we we do this movie show and like we always talk about movies you're in and we always mention you and it would be really cool if you like would you know would you want to like talk to us or something and then he just never he left me on red never messaged me back or anything like that wow and then I just was like you know what fuck you Grandel Bush yeah you <laughs> fuck you dime store Danny Glover go fuck yourself kiss my ass Balrog <laughs> yeah it was like kind of like wow man. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, that's fucked up. Somebody's grumpy. That's like it's like getting rejected by Virgil. And just for confirmation, yes, uh, West Duty is Cherokee. He's Cherokee, okay. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because he pronounces Ryu wrong. <laughs> yeah. A bunch of characters do. Ken constantly calls him Ryu and it's his best friend. I know. Bison is the only one who says it correctly. Yep. That's because Raul is a gentleman and a scholar. Well, I, I don't know if you've ever... So I did a video a while, like a long time back, and then I was going to redo it, so I deleted it, but I talked about how... Is this the Blanca thing? Yeah, Blanca is how you're supposed to pronounce it, and uh, the main example of proof I gave was the fact that... Uh, Raul Julia, as Bison, calls him Carlos Blanca. And then, you know, 
it's like, okay, well, you know, he messed up. It's like, oh, really? But he's the only person to say Ken and Ryu. <laughs> yeah. And then I put a I put a cut of everyone saying Ryu throughout the movie. <laughs> And it's like, they say it like 10 times. They're like, Ryu, 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 Ryu. Like it's, and I was like, are you telling me that this guy who is from Puerto Rico <laughs> is going to mess up the name Blanca and call him Blanca, but he's going to say Ryu correctly? I was like, nah, I don't think so. It's Blanca. Exactly. <laughs> I think you might be onto something. Yeah. Thank you, Raul. Um, uh... You you were a true uh, Renaissance man. Yes. R.I.P. This movie is a bit of the uh, I won't say the convergence, but this is one of the convergences of the MDU for sure. We got Raul in there. We got Miguel Nunez Jr. in there. Mm -hmm. uh, West Studi's in there. They're, it's like <laughs> all the seasons are coming together. So so yeah. So so we can we can kind of breeze through this this intro a little bit while we introduce characters and stuff and and pick out some pieces because <laughs> good because this was like i felt like a speed bag that this entire opening sequence <laughs> it's just like it is slamming back and forth between like talking heads news reels and the things they're talking about are insane yeah <laughs> this is sander van oker from gnt news <laughs> gnt news yeah like it's being bounced between like Van Damme being Van Damme and Raul Julia being Raul Julia and then like these like news clips and other shit in between you're like uh, yeah, give me a second <laughs> crisis and Chandelou yeah Chandelou it's actually a Shadaloo yeah Shadaloo yeah like shadow uh, I thought it was Chandelou shadow law because it's like that organization that Bison's in charge of in the video games yeah so shadow law is the is was I think made up for the movie, the the animated movie, and then Shadowloo is a country in this one. Gotcha. So it's like I don't know, it's weird. So then why is he calling it Bison? We'll get to it. Bisonopolis. <laughs> yeah. I I guess that's just like his city. He's making himself. <laughs> <laughs> Question mark. So so Chun Li is a news reporter, and she's reporting on all the crazy war shit that's happening because Bison is basically sending in uh, his army into these different uh, sections of the world and sort of taking conquering each. Uh, bit you know thailand and japan usa ussr yeah <laughs> brazil which it's still the ussr to this day apparently <laughs> apparently according to zangief <laughs> oh, yeah well zangief is not the brightest bulb in this movie as we find out oh oh poor andrew bernarski yeah uh i love how we go to bison while this news report's going on and he floats in in his fucking uh king koopa chair <laughs> in the teacup yeah that's supposed to be levitating but it's obviously on an armature yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking craning into the shot it uses this is just superconductor electromagnetism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but as we find out later. Are you not familiar with that, Mr. Yeah. Guile? Don't you know it, you idiot? So yeah, sixty-three hostages and twenty million dollars. Billion. Uh, which doesn't really seem like, I, it, like, listen, it's a lot of money, but it's not as much as you would expect for what Bison's trying to pull off. It's such a specific number, too, like, 63 hostages. He, here's, here's the thing with Bison, okay? <laughs> he is, he is absolutely the universe's best and worst con man, okay? Because all of his shit is based on hypotheticals and when we get there kind of situations. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the bison dollars. I don't know how he got this kind of army and following because all of his, it's a, it's just built on, like, maybe promises. Like, we'll take over the world, but will we? Of course. How? We will. Dude, he's that client that pays you in exposure? Yeah. That's who the, he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except for DJ, for some reason, he gets actual he gets actual paychecks. Yeah. Well, I don't think DJ fucking understood that he was getting paid in Bison Bucks. That's true too. Yeah. True. It's a fucking fortune, man. Also, I'm pretty sure the second DJ tries to go anywhere else, he's going to be like hunted down by the NSA and all these things as a terrorist. Right. <laughs> I cannot wait to talk about, like, the real-world implications of half the shit that happens in this movie because a lot of it is alarming. <laughs> oh, yeah. You think he, like, he fought Eddie Gordo and then just ended up with Bison somehow? <laughs> Lost that fight? 
Yeah. We're introduced to guy. Jesus Christ, there's so many fucking people we're introduced to. It's just like, we just rapid fire fucking Chun-Li. We got M. Bison. We got Zangief. We got Guile. We got Miguel Nunez Jr. playing DJ. Third person in a couple months of this season uh, doing a Jamaican accent. First we had Petey Wheatstraw. Then we had Coffee. Now we have... <laughs> DJ. Miguel Nunez, man, he has been the unsung hero of the MDU for like the past year. Yeah. <laughs> just been hanging. He was just at Leprechaun 4. Yeah, and he actually survived that movie. He helped take out Mitten Spider. He survived this too. You think he went to space after this? Probably. Maybe. That's where he had to go to get away with the NSA. Yeah, probably. Every time he pops up, you're like, oh, and it's like, it's how we were like Clint Howard. We're just like, God, we love seeing you, even if what you're doing is garbage. <laughs> Fucking E Honda is played by Peter Tuya Sosopo. Did I say that right? Tuya Sosopo. Tuya Sosopo. He still does a lot of stuff too. He's, does he's he really? in things. Yeah, he's always like a bit part, but he play. He's like you know, he's a character actor. You know what I mean? Well, well, good for him. I mean, I think he does a good job as as E Honda in this. Yeah, I think the last thing I saw him in was. Uh, you ever watch Workaholics? Uh, yeah, yeah. He was in an episode of that once, and um. I, there was something else I was watching. I saw him like, yo, it's Peter Tuyasa Sopo. <laughs> there he is. There's E Honda, Samoan Honda. Yeah, there he there he goes. The only reason why I know how to say that too is because I did I used to do the intros for rental reviews and I would do the uh like the voiceover and I had to say all of their names because <laughs> that's right. We used to just, you know, it would be like uh, oh, today we're watching uh fucking what's it called? Uh Commando with <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Ray Don Chong. But that with Street Fighter, I was like, we need to make sure we say every single person's name. <laughs> and it was like, uh, and then, you know, we, we had to mention Grandel Bush again because we always mention him. But I was like, Peter Tuyasa Sopo. <laughs> they, we are fitting 10 pounds of shit into a fine pa- five pound bag yeah. in this film. Yeah. It's like a three pound bag. Yeah. Because you got it. Okay. Your A story is Guile. <sighs> Uh, and Bison, which I guess is technically your A-B story when you get down to it. Then you have the Chung Li, like, camera crew story. Mm-hmm. Then you have Ken and Ryu having this, like, gang war with Sagat or something. But they're good guys, question mark? And then, like, the subplot of each of those plots, like the stuff with the Doctor and... Uh, Dr. Dalsim? Yeah. Dr. Dalsim. Dr. Dalsim. Dr. Dalsim, Dr. Dalsim. This movie's plot is essentially a series of nesting dolls. Yeah. <laughs> right. But speaking of Dr. Dalsim, we kind of get introduced to him here because Bison and Guile somehow kind of get into this altercation by, like... Bison hacking the fucking network or having DJ do it while Guile's giving an interview. Yeah. And this is where he drops that, like, you have three days, Colonel Guile, to give me the $20 billion. Because Guile calls him a dickhead on live TV. It's like, anytime, dickhead. I'm going to fight you, dickhead. We'll go worldwide, just like now. Can I add that Guile is the fucking worst? Oh, no, he isn't. Fucking, he's a <laughs> douchebag in this movie. My God. He kind of is, but he's not. Jean-Claude <laughs> is reading off fucking cue cards this whole movie, dude. Yo, you want to know, if you guys watch the uh, the unedited, before they ADR'd all of uh, Guile's dialogue, you gotta hear it, it's a, it's only as far as I've seen it's in the ultimate edition or extreme edition DVD, but they have the intro scene and uh, Jean Claude Van Damme's voice is super high pitched. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, like um, I I did a, a comparison at one point and I never put the video out. I don't. I gotta see if I still have it. But it'll be a good time now, dude. You know how he's like uh, that bastard Bison when he says it. In the original one, he's like, the bastard bison. (laughs) Like, he sounds like a girl almost. Like, his voice is super high-pitched. And they ADR'd all of his dialogue. Oh, my God, dude. I will kick that bison's ass so hard. Now he's German. (laughs) I will kick his ass so hard. (laughs) The next bison wannabe will feel it. (laughs) a caterpillar from Bugs Life. <laughs> I was uh, I was reading about some of the behind the scenes of this movie, and it just sounded like a total shit show while they were making it. Yeah. But uh, specifically, John Claude didn't give two fucks about this movie. You're kidding me. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> he admitted to doing ten thousand dollars worth of cocaine a week in his trailer. Oh my god. And just banging out uh, Kylie Minogue all the time on that coke. Yeah. Which not for anything, but that sounds like a really awesome time. 
<laughs> um, yes. I just thought it was funny because later in the movie, like, they don't have any kind of sexual tension pretty much the whole film. And then towards the end, like, Guile grabs her by the chin and looks at her seductively. I was like, what was that about? Yeah. And then I read that and I was like, oh, okay. Come here. Do a line of cocaine off my dick. Here we go. Your Cammy, get it? Yeah, he gave her the Richard Pryor. The Richard <laughs> Pryor? <laughs> you remember that from Coffee? He did that to Pam Greer and she almost died? Oh, yeah, that's right. I got that shit on VHS. Oh, man. I'm going to put cocaine on your cervix. Here we go. I have also heard stories about Roll Julia needing to be heavily medicated to even do this movie. Oh, sure. Due to his cancer. Well, geez, man. Well, I think he, he beat the cancer at this point, didn't he? No, I, I think he still had it. And then what ha- What ended up killing him were the parasites or something. He got, like, food poisoning. Yeah. And then had a fucking stroke. Yeah, and he looks... Certain scenes in this movie, he looks fantastic because he's so lively. Like, the man's just full of energy. The best actor in this film, bar none, he's incredible in every single scene he does. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. I love Bison. He elevates the movie for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, but there's some scenes where you look at him, the lighting hits him just right. You're like, ah, oh, I can see it. Like, you're so sick. Well, he wanted to work. He, uh, you know, he wanted to do this movie. Oh, no. Yeah. His kids wanted him to do, wanted him to do the movie. They were, they were huge Street Fighter fans. And yeah, he was like, I'll do it for my children. And he did it. Yeah. And to his credit, like as weak as he is physically, like you, I mean, initially in, in most points of this movie, you wouldn't be able to know he's terribly sick. He's awesome. He's so fucking full of life. He's like a bottomless pit of energy. No, he's incredible in every single scene. I, like for Street Fighter the movie, he's he kills every scene. Bringing it. The monologue he gives at Bisonopolis <laughs> is great. And and everything is just so A plus. Everything about it. So yeah, so 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 Bison has a bunch of these hostages and they're they're fucking quipping back and forth on this fucking like hacked news interview. And John Claude's like, I'm coming for the hostages and I'm coming for you, Charlie. I'm coming, Charlie. I'm coming for you. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Specific of you, my friend Charlie. He has black hair and he has a <laughs> The whole reason that I'm doing this whole crusade is to go save my friend Charlie. 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 I'm coming. Carlos. I mean Charlie. I want to say that before he gets to Charlie, I believe uh, Bison has a uh, a little fun with two soldiers that he just like Steven Seagal's. Yeah. Just like baps him around and then just breaks her neck and throws him down. You've come from across the world to fight me. <laughs> Now's your chance. He looks like one of those fake martial artists who says they can knock you out with their key. Like it's just these quick hand motions and then a neck snap sound effect and the guy falls down. <laughs> Yeah, pathetic. It's the equivalent of fucking Dracula and the Monster Squad when he's murking those fucking cops, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. The fucking dude runs over and he just, like, snaps his neck and he's like, that was easy. Where's the next one? We, we, you got to think about, like, 1994. This is the first, like, few minutes of the movie. You're watching, like, a newscast and then you watch Bison snap a guy's neck. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, my God. He's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he killed another man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Guile, your friend Carlos Blank is here. Put him in the nemesis program. Yeah, get Dr. Dalsam on the job. Carlos Blanca. <laughs> Charlie. He puts him in the fucking Devo chair, dude. How goes our version of the Winter Stepfather program? <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of a, a, a dumbass program. It's like, put a, pump him full of, uh, you know, mutagen and just show him fucking 4chan videos all day <laughs> <laughs> until he goes mad they fucking fill him with ecto cooler and orange lava burst dude i know yeah and and make him watch wrecked threads all day <laughs> It's like that one scene in the fifth element when Lelu Dallas multipass looks at like the war footage and starts crying. It's yeah. like, just show him that on, on a loop. Yeah, right? What a stupid fucking thing. Just put him on a live leak stream all the time. <laughs> Why wasn't he just like a wild man that came out of the jungle? Whatever. Anyway. Get get uh, Charlie ready and pull up rotten.com. <laughs> pull up two girls, one cup. Oh, God. <laughs> I love when he goes to dolls and he's like, okay, well, what are you showing him? And he shows him in on the TV. He's like, yes, what's wrong with this? This is normal educational. Uh... Yeah, merely educational software. <laughs> and he's like, well, you know, he, he he thinks it's sick, unlike you. And then Bison, like, fucking, like, force chokes the guy. Yeah. Unlike you, he's not psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> Grabs him. I'm Dr. Dalsim, and I'm very spiritual. You presume too much of my good nature. Oh, yeah. I, I'm just going to tell you guys, I can literally quote the movie to the sound effect sometimes. <laughs> <laughs>
It's a good problem to have. <laughs> so yeah, we smash cut to Vega in his fucking cage. Now I love this scene because <laughs> Vega, dude, it fucking remind it would it looks just like the fucking video game stage, dude. Yeah, and Vega looks great. I just want to note that that like most of the character actors in this and their costumes are pretty fucking great in this movie. Yeah, yeah. and Vega is definitely at the top for me. Jay Tavare. Yep. Yeah, he uh the little bit that he has in the movie, he makes uh it all work really well. Yeah, he's excellent. He's a really good Vega. He has the look. He does the fucking backflip, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sans the yodel, which uh, he didn't yodel, but you know, that's fine. Yeah, it's okay. I love that he looks like he's giving literally everything around him bedroom eyes. Yeah. <laughs> like he looks at a fork seductively. Everything he does is like, "Hello." <laughs> he's like Pep he's like Pepe Le Pewing his way around the world. <laughs> he's like a hot matador dude with his tight little spandex on. Sir, do you have clothes? No. <laughs> Look at my ass. This is all I wear. <laughs> And he stabs a long-haired guy with a machete. <laughs> Whoever that guy was, he just kills him. <laughs> fucking Lou Albano's running around this fucking cage. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, they, I mean, they get to the cage, though, because uh, we, we did kind of skip a part where Ken and Ryu, they're trying to sell, like, guns to Sagat, who's, like, a fucking gangster for some reason. I can't. <laughs> and... These guns look fake as shit. They look like they would they shoot tennis balls, and these assholes are like, all right, point, fire. Yeah. Resmo. But Vivo. <laughs> Vivo. <Vivo. Vivo. Vivo. laughs> and it's like... <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> say hello to the Chinese M1M way fucking <laughs> triple pulse uh, Nerf gun. <laughs> Real quick, Ryu and Ken. Uh, oh, I just said Ryu. Fuck me. Thanks, Wes. Well, in the movie, it's Ryu. Yeah. So Ryu is... is uh, Byron Mann and Ken is Damian Chapa. And let me ask you guys a question. Um, Ken, does, is it just me or does Ken not look like Vigo Mortensen morphed with fucking uh, Corey Feldman? Yeah, I see that. <laughs> he looks like Vigo Mortensen with a bad fever. <laughs> I can see. But I, I was thinking it was Bimmy and Jimmy after their uh, trials and <laughs> tribulations from the end of Double Dragon. Bimmy and Jimmy. Holy shit. Imagine if he was opposite fucking what's-his-face. Uh, not not DeCascos, the other one. Scott Wolf. Oh, man. Dude from Party of Five. That would have been rough. This guy barely seems like he can fight, but Scott Wolf really can't fight. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean... <sighs> Yeah, we'll get to it later. The whole fight scene at the end and everything like that. Like, oh, yeah. With the special moves. <laughs> Hadouken without the Hadouk? Yeah, it's just a, a flash of white. <laughs> um, yeah, there's cr very creative ways to not have Ken show too much fighting because it's very apparent that only one of those guys was very good. The other one was not so good. Well, I was also reading there was some kind of kerfuffle with the way that... Uh, the stunt training was going on where people were being trained like incorrectly halfway through the movie. They didn't. They... No, it, it wasn't even that they were training incorrectly. It was that most of them had never fought. And the dude who was training them was like this world class martial artist. And they he they had one of him and they're like, hey, by the way, teach 16 people fucking karate in eight weeks. And he's like, oh, my God. Well, he's simultaneously teaching uh, Bridget Nielsen, not Bridget Nielsen, Jesus Christ, what's her fucking name? <laughs> Never mind. Bridget Wilson. Cameron Diaz? <laughs> Cameron Diaz, yeah. <laughs> or, uh, Bridget, uh, uh... Wilson. Wilson, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Sagat, uh, you know, R Ryu and Ken get fucking had by Sagat, or made by Sagat, rather, and he's like, hi, West dude, he's like, you fucking sold me toy guns, assholes, guess what? Now you're my fucking prisoners, and you're gonna fight in my electrified cage. Yeah. And, uh, that woman has a... She throws out her, uh, Vegas sign. Oh, yeah, man. After she sees ripped-ass, uh, Byron Man. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> there's a lot of horny in this movie for, uh, you know, there's also a lot of... This, this is where I notice a trend startup where, like, a Street Fighter movie is about to break out and then something come, comes crashing through the wall, quite literally sometimes, yeah. and just breaks it up like, <laughs> every time. I want my fucking Street Fighter TM, and uh, we don't get it for a while because fucking Guile comes barreling through the fucking uh, wall in a tank and arrests everybody before Vega and Ryu could fight. Yeah, to ruin everyone's day, including mine. Yeah, you're all 
under arrest. You're coming with me. We do get teased with kind of a cool fight that we'll return to later. Yeah, but if they fought in the fucking cage, that'd be amazing. Oh yeah. yeah. Like I was, I'm, I was so hyped for the for the Ryu and Vega fight, and I don't know. I wish I got it there instead of where we get it. But anyway, I love that Vega took his mask off and then no came out with his mask on, took it off, and then had someone bring it back over, and then he goes to put it back on, and then he's like, nah, and just <laughs> decides not to. <laughs> Ryu's like whipping around that fucking sword, and they're like, no weapons, and he's like. I guess I won't use my signature claw. Okay. Yeah, that's when the girl throws the sign away. And it makes a weird, like, honking noise. <laughs> it goes, wah, wah. And then Vega gives, like, the greatest, like, ga you know, mouth agape <laughs> stare to her. He's so pissed. <laughs> He's so, like, shocked. My bitches. Uh, but yeah, then Guile arrests everybody, and this is just kind of the movie collecting all the characters and placing them in one place, um, because now that they're under Guile's watchful eye... Oh, Christ. He knows that Sagat is a business partner of M. Bison, and he's kind of, like, anticipating that they're gonna meet. Yeah, because they, like, he, like, they take him into their fucking, like, makeshift jail or some shit. Okay, so, my move, when I was watching it, my stream started to buffer on this very specific frame that straight up looked like a gay exploitation prison. <laughs> <laughs> It's a shot of Vega and Sagat, and Sagat's got the cigarette in his mouth, and Vega is just like got his shoulder on him and is just giving him that fucking Vega look. <laughs> <laughs> and Sagat is staring off into the distance. I know, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm like, wow, there's some raw sexual energy happening here, and I was not expecting it. You fucking cue that careless whisper, baby. <laughs> I love how Vega in prison knows how to make a fucking claw out of bamboo and eagle talons or whatever it is. <laughs> in no time. Yeah. Like, when you think about, like, shanks, like, like little pieces of glass with, like, tape wrapped around them, this motherfucking has a bamboo rake. It looks like the fucking <laughs> thing from, uh, what is that, Enter the Dragon? It has bird talons as the claws. Like, he had to rip those out of a bird or find <laughs> them or something. I don't know where he just found them in a prison yard. Uh, he made do. Sagat Tiger Upper cut him out of the fucking air that you know we don't get to see him fight but we get to see him do that off screen tiger so we cut to fucking dr dalsam and he's making uh char charlie into a uh a monster i guess this is the, what you guys were talking about before where like they they show him like the fucking clockwork orange reel yeah of sh of bad shit and pump him full of fucking ecto cooler and over orange lava burst and turn him into a fucking green man <laughs> and then he pops out and he's like the man on the bridge i knew him and then robert redford slaps him <laughs> I don't know, too, if you know, but, like, uh, one of the scenes shows a legit dude getting shot in the head. Oh, really? Yeah. I read that. It's an actual, like, piece of footage of a guy getting, like, his brains blown out, and they showed it in the movie. No shit. They probably snuck that in there. It's from, like, I, I don't know what it's from, but it's, like, you see a guy, like, points a gun at a guy's head and shoots him, and it's it's legit. Oh, man. Isn't the monk self-immolating uh, also among, like, the highlight reels over the fuck he's having to watch? Yeah, that might be. I, I can't remember. That's a, the Rage Against the Machine album, right? Yes. A uh, family movie, by the way. Mm. <laughs> I, I love how Raul Julie is like, after you crush my enemies, we'll see about getting you published. That should chew you up. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see about getting you published. Just like I helped Mary Shelley and even John Hurt. Look at the Buchanan. <laughs> He's famous now. Damn you. Bison's a good leader. You know, <laughs> but Bison at the very least maintains a very solid morale. Like it doesn't matter that he's an absolute liar and a con man. Like he just keeps everybody happy. Exactly. He's very polite. He keeps people so happy that Zangief did know he wasn't getting paid. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Zangief doesn't know what fucking year it is. He gives a thumb sideways for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Zangief has brain damage. Most likely. I believe we get a little bit of uh, Ryu versus Sagat here. Do we not? Uh, while I think they're in the prison fight. Yeah, in the prison fight. Ryu, I think, fights like some no-name douchebag or some something like that. It's fucking probably fucking, what is it, TJ Storm? Yeah, yeah, well, he's in it. I saw that again. He's in the credits. He's somewhere in there. He kicks the, uh, the, the Talon, bamboo Talon claw off of Vega. And then Guile's watching this all happen, and he's like, looking around like, huh, oh, yeah, pretty impressive, huh, oh. Well, that's enough street fighting for now. Go down there and break it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, T-Hawk, go down there and, and fix this. Um, you're you're in the movie, but you're not really a prominent character. Nobody played Super Street Fighter yet, but it's okay. It's like he looked at the camera and was like, go take care of it. T-Hawk. 
<laughs> Teed period hawk. Thawk. <laughs> <laughs> He's a thawk for sure. <laughs> I forgot he was in the movie, and this, I think, is the scene where he finally says his name, and I, like, had to pause the movie and get up and be like, oh, right, T-Hawk. Don't worry, later he gets his patented vest and, and Cherokee headband. Yeah. Kind of. It's Cherokee. It means good luck. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> so then he, uh, Guile meets with uh, Ken and Ryu, and he's kind of like, yeah, we're trying to take out Sagat, but we, uh, we don't have anybody on the inside inside his gang. And he's like, uh, I forget who says it, whether it's Ken or Ryu, but he's like, oh, man. He's like, the only way we can uh, get his trust is maybe if you we kill you. And he's like, yeah, what about that? Maybe we'll have to do that. Yeah, he says, uh, if he won't trust a couple of new friends, maybe he'll trust a f- couple of new enemies. The only way you're getting out of here is over my dead body. Foreshadowing. Okay, that line delivery broke me in half because they <laughs> linger on his face as he does this shitting grin yeah. as if to slam right, <laughs> a slam cut right to his funeral. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Over my dead body slam cut, dearly departed. Uh, by the way, Guile is not even fucking blonde. Somebody who did his dye job, like, fucked up the toner or something, because he is fucking strawberry, this, this man. He looks like a redhead. Yeah, for sure. He's the color bleach. <laughs> He's the color of too much cocaine. $10,000 a week cocaine. That's what color he is. That's the nosebleed that he keeps accidentally rubbing into his hair. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. He's like Ric Flair after a fucking accident. Yeah, that's how he, that's how he makes those fucking, that, that like, I don't what is that move called where he does the backflip with the two? Oh, the flash kick. Yeah, he fucking, he's doing flash kicks all day in the corner. This leads to the big prison break where, uh, I think, well, yeah, I think we're already in the prison break. Uh, well, let's just set it up. So they, they basically, Ken and Ryu, they pretend like they're fighting, but they really just use it as an excuse to grab the keys off the guard and they, uh, they throw it to Wes Studi. And uh, they break out of the back of this truck. Yeah, they have, like, this weird, you know, they they make a plan with Guile to fucking, uh, to get out of there. And they need Sagat to get to Bison, so that's, like, part of the plan, too. And they're fucking, they're fucking, they make this great escape, right? And Ken and Guile are, like, shooting at each other? Oh, my God, I love this sequence. Because, like, okay, so the way this actually plays out and the way it should have played out are entirely different. (laughs) In fact, this should have ended with the slam cut to his death that I was talking about because, like, Ken is, like, what I, what I gather from this is Ken is shooting at Guile, but, like, is shooting at, like, this, like, squib thing on his abdomen or something. Yeah. And he hits him from, like, 300 yards away in a fucking moving vehicle with a handgun. That fucking grouping is impressive, I gotta say. <laughs> right in the middle of the body. Yeah. And he just dies in the middle of the street. <laughs> And Sagat's like, yeah, Ken's my kind of guy. You want to go rob a cruise ship or nothing about this looks suspicious? He already recruited Kano. Throw throw Rodney Dangerfield's body into <laughs> the ocean? He's got Kano and Ken on his team, yeah. Yeah, maybe that was why they were so excited for those machine guns in that movie, because they had their first experience with, like, you know, these tennis ball shooters. Yeah, they were so pissed, and he was... <laughs> I wanted my Chinese M1 semi... <laughs> I got this fucking toy. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we go to Bison. And this is where he does his Bisonopolis fucking speech because I think he finds out about Guile getting killed and he's like, oh, that's great news, General. Congratulations. <laughs> On the contrary, I mourn. Yeah. Okay. Gather the men. I wish to monologue. Well, and I know he talks about how he's like, oh, Bisonopolis will be a utopia. All people need to do is worship me and it'll be a happy place. <laughs> the f- the food court should be bigger. Everyone is accusing me of wanting to do evil things. I don't want to do evil things. I want to do good things. And by good things, I mean blatantly evil things. All I want to do is create the perfect genetic soldier and then have everybody bow before me. And then make a bunch of them and have them invade. What's so wrong about it? <laughs> well, he, he wants to do it, uh, what is it? Not for power, not for evil, but for good. Right. But well, bow down to me. <laughs> in, in, in humble gratitude, they will they will do that. In yeah. humble gratitude, yeah. <laughs> Bison is that friend who who comes to you with a pyramid scheme. Oh, yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> I love how after he does this speech, it pans up to, like, what Bisonopolis is supposed to look like. And it's just, like, the bad Shadaloo logo. Yeah. yeah. And he puts his head down as if, like, they're going to take the spotlight off of him. Like, and scene. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like it's on stage. Zangief's like, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. 
that was a beautiful speech he gave too though that was like such an amazing uh that's like if you're like an acting student <laughs> if you were in my class and you did that monologue a plus. <laughs> you pass. You'd be like the teacher in that uh, dream sequence in uh, Christmas Story where she's like, A plus, plus, <laughs> plus, plus. A red ride of BB gun. Then we go to Chung Lee somehow breaking into a government fucking military facility and not getting caught. Uh, They're like in the van and we, it, it's like Balrog, Honda, and Chun Lee in the van. And they're like, how are we going to get it? How are we going to infiltrate? She's like, don't worry. I'll just get in my ninja garb. Her very funny ninja garb that I don't really understand. When she when she finds Guile right. <laughs> and he's laying on the table, I was like, has he just been laying there for like 12 straight hours? Hours. He sure has. <laughs> that was my question. <laughs> He's just taking a nap. I've been waiting for you. I'm alive in the movie. Yo, and the, the scene where, where he gets shot and everything, I remember being a kid and it really, I was like, they killed Guile? Yeah. He's <laughs> dead already? <laughs> Wait, what? I love how Chun-Li, like, tell, like, she's got this very, like, powerful scene where she's like, no, you don't understand. I want Bison's head because he killed my dad or whatever. And he's like, "You, this isn't about your vendetta. It's about my vendetta. Yeah, it's a it's a war. This this war is not about your personal vendetta. It's about mine. My and it's like, oh, so okay, so Guile, like no joke, uh, Guile's like the worst soldier in the world. Oh, dude, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, he, if you think about like the video games and everything, and the and the movie, he starts a war uh, because he hates Bison. He wants to fight Bison or whatever. But on top of that, like even the character from the game is pretty questionable. He leaves his family. <laughs> he invites, you know, however many people onto a military base, fights them in front of a, you know, eight million dollar aircraft or whatever in front of his buddies. He he fights people. Sometimes he gets beat up and he also destroys cargo while he's getting beat up. <laughs> yeah. How many wooden crates have you broken, Colonel Guile? How many cars did you beat up? I don't know if you guys ever tried to get on a military base after, like, 2001, but I used to live near uh, McGuire Air Force Base when I was growing up. And my I, To go to my friend's house, uh, and, and I was 14, 15 or something, they would search my bag, uh, and they would take my PlayStation 2 out and, like, look through it to make sure I didn't have any bombs. Guile just brings a fucking... Brazilian monster man <laughs> onto the military base to beat him up in front of five or six of his friends. Forgive my ignorance, but is there even a fucking plot in the in Mortal Kombat or Mortal Kombat in in Street Fighter Two, like the video game? In the video game, I mean, it's like Bison is a bad guy, and that's it. Charlie, I don't know. And you just work your way there. They try to, like, flesh it out, for lack of a better term, I feel like in, like, the Alpha series to kind of give more context. Yeah, I never played any of those. Yeah, the Alpha series is, like, is basically taking place between the original Street Fighter and Street Fighter 2. Gotcha. So it's like Ryu has beaten Sagat, and, and now it's like, you know, Bison isn't quite there yet, but he is. He's, like, starting to show up, but... Right. I feel like once Akuma came around, like, people started to have a little more elaborate backgrounds because then they tied him into Ryu and Ken and all kinds of other stuff and, like, their shared power and the whatnot. The Dark Dukin or whatever? The Dark Hado. I thought Akuma was Shen Long when I first played it because of the whole, like, you must defeat Shen Long to stand a chance, which was just a, a mess up of the, uh, the Shoryuken localization right and then didn't they in four like towards the end of that i forget if it was base game or like a dlc didn't they have a character that was basically like shen long was yeah uh goken who is uh akuma's brother and is like the good side of the force when it comes to the <laughs> the dark hado or whatever it is like yeah i think you had to beat it like on very hard or some shit now that i'm thinking back on it but yeah like compared to mortal Kombat, like the lore is very very service level in street fighter i'm sure there'd be some diehards out there that would argue differently but like mortal Kombat, they make a point to actually have like a story and a plot, whether you like it or not, they, they their structure. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if there was like like a periphery uh, plot within the game. I don't, I just don't, I don't remember it. There, there, there are events that happen, but it is not nowhere near as detailed as like a Mortal Kombat. Yeah, you know? or or Tekken even. Until you hit Tekken Seven, and then Akuma's like, I've always been part of the Tekken universe. I just been <laughs> hanging around waiting to kill Kazuya. <laughs> uh, 
I, I, we, I don't think we mentioned it before, but Kyle, here's Kylie Minogue as Cammy, and her and fucking T Hawk try to apprehend Chun Li, and she jumps out a fucking window. Right. Yeah. With this bad ADR, they're like, "Hey, she's crazy. That's nuts. You you jumped out a window. Yeah. What a screw up. What a screw up. That's what it was. What a woman. I love Chun Li's little like face mask that isn't actually a mask because it doesn't conceal anything. If anything, it highlights every detail of your face. Of her face, yeah. It it, it makes you centralize on her face. It's it's a it's a triangle highlighting your chin to your eyes. And then we jump to a fucking illegal arms bazaar that's run <laughs> by fucking bison in his little tent. <laughs> yeah. We've got fucking nuclear, you know, uh, missiles without the warheads and tanks with fucking yeah what does he too he says too like uh this helicopter's only been used once to uh evacuate the u.s embassy in saigon or whatever and it's like supposed to be the helicopter i guess from uh you know that that thing in the vietnam war where the people are like going to the helicopter oh that's yeah, yeah, supposed yeah. to be like the helicopter <laughs> and so god's like trying to sell this weaponry to bison so he's got like all his men there and bison has all his men there and they just pass around guns for a while. And they watch uh, belly dancers. Yeah, and they watch fucking E. Honda and Balrog put Chun-Li in a Capcom barrel and then <laughs> yeah. cut it in half. I thought I was losing my mind when I saw that. I was like, did that say Capcom? They do a magic show. So have you guys watched this in HD before? Uh, I did today. <laughs> I just did. Okay, so I, I had always watched this movie on VHS until recently I watched it on the Blu-ray. This is the first time I did. Yeah, there's there's a part where during that whole magic act they do, there's a part where like the crowd laughs and I never understood why they laughed. And then I realized that uh, uh, I think Balrog, he takes his shirt off and he whips it in Vega's face. <laughs> Or, or DJ's face, I Because it's widescreen, right? Yeah, and the thing is, you can finally see that he does that. And I was like, I have never in my life, and I've seen this movie hundreds of times. Oh, yeah. Noticed that detail until, like, like less than a year ago. And I've seen this movie, like, like literally, I've seen Street Fighter the movie several hundred times. And I know that's, like, a weird thing to say, but I used to put this movie on uh repeat on my vcr at my dad's house every weekend i would watch this movie <laughs> and then in college i used to put it on on i had a one of those tvs with the vcr built into it and i would just have it on in the background constantly my my roommate jamie used to just be like oh my god every time he would come home from my class <laughs> street fighter the movie was on and i was passed out like <laughs> sleeping he's like am i a, am i in a time loop <laughs> yeah so so bison's are making a deal with sagat for these fucking guns and he's like why why settle for money mr sagat why not i'll share the country with you after i destroy it see see this is what i mean he makes all these weird ass flagrant like grandiose promises and then just like when they go Elaborate. He goes, mmm, and then just walks away. Like, yeah. West Studi's not stupid, man. You, he knows what happened with that fucking, with the Argonautica, man. He got fucked. And then he got eaten by a fucking sea monster. That's how he lost his eye, and he went bald. I didn't get shit out by an octopus to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> it burned all his fucking body hair off. He even says to him, like, let's see what the color of your money is. And then let's just say it ain't the right color. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's it's red. Very red. And then fucking Sagat flips shit. He's like, you're a fucking... This is some really fucking terrible acting. You raving lunatic. And he puts throws the money in the fire. By the way, uh, just to bring this up from earlier, uh, today, bison dollars would have doubled in price. <laughs> they are now, uh, five British pounds is 10 British pounds today. Five British pounds in 1994. Oh, I'm glad I invested in the in the bison buck stock, yeah. Yeah. Move out of the way, cryptocurrencies. Why is that not a cryptocurrency? Why <laughs> right? is bison dollars not a cryptocurrency? <laughs> you have Dogecoin, but you don't have bison dollars. I will literally buy a thousand dollars of bison bucks and see how that goes. If there was if if bison bu if bison dollars becomes a cryptocurrency, I might invest in cryptocurrency. It's the only way you're gonna get me into it. That's the one stupid fucking thing that would like go through the roof and you'd be end up a fucking millionaire right <laughs> get in on the ground floor <laughs> the official currency of movie dumpster oh yeah <laughs> the, the bison dollar john heard only uh 
gets paid. He only pays in bison dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All he has to do is capture the queen, and then we'll be good to go. Yeah. So yeah. So then here we get like they they uh, Ryu and, K- and Ken are there, and Chun Li's like, "What are these fucking assholes doing here?" So they like knock him out and like bring him into the other tent, and they're like, "They're like, no, we're on your side or whatever, man." And they're like. Who are you? And he's like, I'm E. Honda. Uh, Bison ruined my life because I was going to be Yokozuna. And Balrog's like, yeah, I was going to be a boxer and they ruined my career too. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And Ken gets one of the best lines right here where he's like, let me guess, figure, figure skating. skating. When he looks at uh, chun <laughs> I was like, damn, dude. Like, <laughs> that was pretty rough. And she just punches, or she grabs his face. Ken, Ken kind of sucks in this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's he's like a dime store Johnny Cage, and I'm, I'm not with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I could see him as Johnny Cage over, uh, what's his name, Bar- uh, Darren Ashby or, or Lyndon Ashby, Lyndon Ashby. I love Lyndon Ashby as Johnny Cage, though. Yeah, he was great. Um. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Why would you fucking put a bomb on a truck... <laughs> And send it down like a fucking whole road <laughs> instead of just planting a bomb right in the middle of where you're going to blow it up. Yeah, you think they could have done that. They had <laughs> more than enough time. It's also rolling down the street, like on a crowded street at like three miles an hour. Yeah. Like it's just hitting potholes and just bouncing into the air. Like it's- <laughs> So Sagat and Bison are at odds. So both both of their gangs or armies or whatever the fuck you want to call it are about to shoot each other. And Ken and Ryu come in and they're like, oh, wait a second. Let's not do this or whatever. And uh, they take they take them both hostage. You're like, you're on my side, right? And he's like, why are you interfering with my affairs? And he's like, oh, because they're spies. And then we hear Chun Li coming out of the closet. They open it up, and it's a fucking television with a. I it, I thought the bomb was in the closet, but it's not. The only thing I could think of was fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin fucking with DX when he blows up the DX <laughs> Express, and he's got like the bulldozer. Oh my god, I watched that live when it happened. Whoa, <laughs> me too. That's what I thought of immediately. A throwback for sure. They're filming, they're, they're like filming themselves, Honda, Balrog, and Chun Li, as they're like, Well, hey, Bison, we'll see you later. We're going to blow you up now. Here comes the truck. And fucking Zangief's like, Quick, change the channel. Yeah, quick. Change the channel. I, I love it because they hang on his face as his eyes are bugging out with intense fright. Yeah, it's an excellent, excellent written line he's great and miguel nunez jr is always like inserted into scenes with him to have a reaction to be like what the fuck is this guy talking yeah. about he's always like you fucking idiot <laughs> he has to deal with zangief all day <laughs> yeah. this is the only movie that i think i've seen andrew bernyarski like speak in because he plays uh leatherface in the texas chainsaw remake yeah whoa i didn't know that oh yeah yeah uh, what's him joe bob briggs talks about him all the time on uh on the yeah he's mentioned him a few times on on last drive-in and uh i uh, the only reason why i knew that was because i was i you know i was obsessed with street fighter movies so i was looking up all the cast members and he played i think was he just leatherface or was he he was also like Leatherface at the MTV Movie Awards. Oh, really? He was he was there for that. I mean, maybe remember we were doing that shit. Remember when Chucky came to the MTV? Was it MTV M- M- Music Awards? It was like the Oscars or some shit. I don't know. Yes, Chucky was at the Oscars. Yes, Chucky was at uh, WCW Nitro, threatening uh, that too. Uh, Rick Steiner for some <laughs> reason. <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, Cousin Skeeter was on Monday Night Raw, so I don't know if that's a uh, good thing. <laughs> no, he wasn't. Was he really? Bill Bellamy, <laughs> deep cut. So the, the the Muppets did an episode of Raw, and apparently within the WWE canon, Seamus and Beaker are cousins. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> me, me, me. I want to see Beaker give somebody a fucking... What is that even called? I can't remember Seamus' finisher. The bro kick? Yeah, the bro kick. Oh my god. <laughs> it's very funny. He walks up and like straightens Beaker's hair and he says, say hello to your mom for me. And then he just walks away. <laughs> And then, like, he says, he's like, hello, cousin. So does that mean that uh, Seamus is in the Disney universe then? Because, yeah, they, you know, the Muppets are owned by Disney now. Well, who did Turtles? Was that Fox? Ninja Turtles? Yeah, the new Ninja Turtles, yeah. Uh, Nickelodeon, I think. And uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. No, they don't own them yet, do they? <laughs> I don't think so. Not Nickelodeon yet, as far as I know. No, I mean, Disney doesn't own them yet, right? <laughs> Not that we're aware of. Uh, Seamus has his finger in many pies, as we're finding out at this very moment. Miss Piggies, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. He was, uh, was he, was he Rocksteady? 
or Bebop. Yeah. He was Rocksteady? Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, Stevie's dad from Malcolm in the Middle played Bebop. That's right. Okay. No way. Yeah, yeah, that's him. I forget the name of the actor, unfortunately, but... Shit. But, uh, so yeah, so this explosion happens. They blow up fucking Bison's camp, and this is how Guile finds Bison. They... They blow up this fucking thing, and this surveillance cut to the surveillance satellite that, like, yeah, is like oh, explosion detected. Like it's <laughs> like what? And it's I heard a big boom. I heard a boom. <laughs> and it like zooms in like nine bajillion times, and it like you see like Chun Li and everybody, and it like identifies them. Oh, the effect is horrible. I know, but it's just like. You had this fucking powerful ass satellite. You don't have a general idea where this fucking guy is, yeah. and that's what that's what tipped you off. You know, if this took place like ten years later, we just would have looked him up on Google Earth, and that would have been that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bisonopolis into Google Earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see it from space. It's just burned in the fucking logo into the ground. So, uh, so yeah, they they all get fucking had and captured, but we don't actually see them get captured. Just fucking marched into uh, his hideout. Right, I do love how, just like Shang Tsung in fucking Mortal Kombat, uh, M. Bison signals out the one chick. He's like, ah, Chung Li, come to my uh, personal chambers. He's not making any ifs, ands, or buts about it. He's like, you're weak, and you're a woman, and you're attractive. Come into my chambers and have a Mai Tai. <laughs> yeah, his idea of foreplay is like, stand around and sit there while I walk around in the <laughs> silk robe and tell you about things. Yeah, look at my... Uh... What's it called? Uh, look at my what, what the fuck is the the murderer guy who uh, who dressed like a clown? Oh my, dude! He has a John Wayne Gacy pogo the clown. Yeah, he has a John Wayne Gacy uh, fucking bison painting. Yeah, <laughs> which uh, I don't know if you get. So so the guy who made the bison on the um on the horse. Yeah. The guy online sells prints of that, but like like huge prints, but they're like eight hundred dollars. Oh my god! And he's the production guy. He was like, "Yeah, I was commissioned to paint this. Uh, you could have this in your house." And I'm like so tempted to just buy one and have that giant, you know. <laughs> it, and it's it's printed to canvas. Like they, he will send it to you and everything. And it's done like order to order. That's amazing. But uh, I, I'm so tempted. If I ever strike it, man, I'm going to have that bison on a horse painting <laughs> so hard in my house. I feel like that would make your house look instantly like that fucking weird ass airport that's got just the bizarre art in it everywhere. Oh, the Denver, Denver airport. Yeah. Yes. It would make your house look like the Denver airport immediately. Like Yo, I have a uh, right now I have a, a canvas print of uh, the Justin Silverman uh renaissance painting oh I yeah, you guys yeah, yeah. Ever seen that. i have one of only two that exist in the world i managed to get like super high res artwork and i have a life-size uh vigo the carpathian hanging up in my house oh wow and that was uh that was mine and my wife's gift to each other for christmas vigo the master of evil <laughs> yeah try to battle my boys dude it's not legal man spirit some people fear it uh it's a good movie and that's all i have to say about that <laughs> Yeah, Tony. It's fun. I like Ghostbusters too. I don't. I don't give a shit about Tony. No, no. <laughs> I like it, but I do not love it. Fuck his dumb ass. <laughs> I, I don't. Want, I wouldn't say love, but enjoy. I do. I do. Yes. So, <laughs> Zangief like takes Ryu and Ken to like get their fucking outfits from the game to to put them on. <laughs> You may pick between white or red, conveniently for you two. <laughs> now you wear costumes from game. Here you go. Sideways, thumbs up. Thumbs sideways. With convenient patch that's rip off a bullet. <laughs> Velcro. Yeah, it's like Velcro. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> um, we have this. Uh, by the way, it just randomly cuts to the hostages who are like in a saw basement, just like eating bread and like taking naps. You have to remember that they're a thing in the movie. <laughs> in the meantime, please meet my friend John <laughs> Kramer. <laughs> Do you want to hang out with Bison? We have this fucking scene where like Guile goes on this tirade about like how he, they need to infiltrate. Uh, Bison's l like stronghold, and he's like, "We cannot do an air attack; it's impossible." And I'm like, "Why?" But he never explains it. He's just like, "No, it's not an option. What we have to do is the daredevil boat ride, 
and we have to go <laughs> up the stream and whatever. I don't know. Do you want to know why he doesn't explain why they can't do an aircraft attack? Because it wasn't in the budget? Well, no. Oh, it was It was originally. <laughs> There's concept art about it. Really? Wherever they filmed this, it might have been Thailand, but regardless, uh, the the local government basically denied them. They weren't allowed to do it. Yeah, it was it was Thailand. They wouldn't let them use the airspace. Oh, really? That's weird. Did they have like... Originally, it was going to be a helicopter fight. Huh. And uh, the Thailand government was like, yeah, no, you're not taking helicopters off. <laughs> I love at this point how much of this movie is just a silly ass G.I. Joe cartoon episode. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it, it did become totally a G.I. Joe movie. The, if you look at the concept art, it's literally um, it's 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 in the the extreme edition DVD. And there's a scene where it's Bison's base. And there's helicopters just shooting red lasers at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's G.I. Joe. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, no, you're not doing that. Cobra. <laughs> Cobra. I bet they would have used that fucking helicopter that West Studi was trying to sell them. <laughs> the Saigon one? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, just side note to that fucking helicopter. I love how it's both military equipment that you can use, but also like an art piece and piece of history because Bison is just that type of guy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, though uh, I think you have these two. You have a couple of them. I saw them. Uh, the the GI Joe Street Fighter, the little figures. Yeah, I do not have any of them. They're really hard to come by now. I had these. I used to have all of them, and I and Mortal. They did it for Mortal Kombat as well. I had like the GI Joe Mortal Kombat figures too. Yeah. Um, I gotta dig them out. I definitely have the speedboat, the Dragon MK1. I just saw it the other day with Reptile on the Dragon MK1. Oh yeah, baby. That's why I needed it. And Kano on the on the com combat cycle yeah <laughs> it's i got the sticker on the side says mk1 the dragon mk1 is the name of the boat that uh reptile drives around i guess in the deadpool that's only like you know <laughs> it's acid so it's always constantly burning the hull <laughs> the gi joe mortal kombat universe so that that's the thing like uh hasbro made the figures and Hasbro made the Mortal Kombat figures, but didn't, I guess, want to put the G.I. Joe name on it because it was, like, controversial. Sure. And they made the action figures for the movie also, but they didn't make them G.I. Joes. They made them, like, they were Street Fighter the movie. The only ones were the Street Fighter 2 G.I. Joes. But they were based off the movie, though. Yep, yep. So, uh, John claudes like, uh, the bison drove me crazy, so I'm going on, the, um, the, the riverboat tour through the, through the, uh, the Thailand, uh, grasslands, um. I love that you're, like, Swiss colonel guy. Like, I don't even know. I'm losing it. <laughs> We're going to ride the boat down the river and. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's also trying to, like tell off like this like lawyer character whatever the fuck this guy's supposed to be oh my god yeah he's supposed to be like an ambassador or something like that i guess can be from the consulate right there's that also this guy shows up with like official documentation for new orders relieves guile of duty and then guile is like well how about you go fuck yourself and then just like starts a war when he says uh you lost your balls <laughs> that's one of the greatest like <laughs> just just rip you apart shut you down lines i've ever heard in my life this is after he gets fucked by the gorilla but before he tries to capture his uncle's dinosaurs and bring him to new york <laughs> he's like bison or he's like oh have you lost your mind no you've lost your balls right <laughs> love that line so incredible <laughs> how am i supposed to come back from this yeah i'm not going home today <laughs> right because he's in the middle of giving a speech when this guy comes up with the papers like guile guile <laughs> uh we we're trying to do negotiations yeah and he's like why don't you go fuck yourself we've decided to negotiate <laughs> negotiate oh my oh, oh, oh. he said i had no testicles oh, oh, oh. that man said i had no balls and this is where he drops that line and oh the classic i will take that bison son of a bitch Yep. I'm getting in my boat, yep. and I'm going up the river, and I'm going to kick that son of a bitch bison's ass so hard. So hard. The next bison wannabe is going to feel it. I'll probably be in prison afterwards, but whatever. He got court-martialed so hard. <laughs> oh, he sure oh, did. Yeah. He, led, he led a war, uh, like, he, he waged a war on his own. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he talked this, this entire army into going with them, because it's like they're showing, they keep cutting to, like, the other officers, like, 
listening to the speech, like tearing up and getting all revved up to go. <laughs> yeah. He leads an attack against a foreign entity, too. Like, it's not even like, you know, just something random or isolated. It's like, dude, you fought a country. Like, <laughs> oh, he sure did, yeah. Shadaloo. After being court, after being officially fired. He hops in the Dragon MK1, and it says his full name on the side of the <laughs> boat. <laughs> yeah. William F. Guile. I love that boat. So while this is all going on, we get this speech, uh, the, the famous speech from uh, Bison. I, I guess he's got a few, but this is the one I always think of when he's talking to Chung Lee. Oh, yeah, she's in her... So he dresses her up in her fucking Player 2 outfit. Yep. Yeah, her red uh, one piece. I always preferred the second controller. <laughs> I was the second position. I always enjoyed the right. It was her uh, her her Street Fighter Turbo. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love how Bison has casual wear, but it's the same thing, but like a tweed. A robe. He's got like a tweed hat and a, and a silk robe. He's a fucking diva, okay? He is a big giant diva, and I love it. He got that fucking Mai Tai recipe. He's like sh shaking up a Mai Tai cocktail. Got that fucking recipe from Corpse Fucker. He's ready to put the moves on Chun Li. Yeah, pumpkin head hand delivered the recipe to him. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, freshly squeezed. Yeah. Thank you, pumpkin head. <laughs> ah, Mr. P head, what a gentleman. So this is where Chun Li is like, oh, yeah, you know, you came to my village and you, you killed my father and I swore revenge against you if I ever had the chance. What do you have to say about that? And he's like, huh. So he's like, that day in your village was the worst day in your life, but to me... It was Tuesday. <laughs> it was Tuesday. <laughs> Fucking boss. It really was boss, though. I, I love the idea of him doing this and a crew member coming in like, hey, we're ordering takeout. And he's like, I have to start over now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you stepped on my line. <laughs> it is a very haunting line, though. Like, it obviously has been parodied to death and people joke about it online for feels like decades now. But uh, if you really put yourself in Chung Lee's fucking shoes, man, like, that is some stone cold shit to hear. Yeah. Well, he just he just lifelessly dismissed like you know a, a raid. He was like, whatever. It's just fucking day to day. To add insult to injury, he's just like, oh yeah, you're a frail whatever woman. You you you're no threat to me. You always hid behind your sumo and your boxer. You can't use a lightsaber. You're not allowed. She ends up like fucking like that's exactly what I wanted you to think and fucking snaps her bonds and does a fucking spinning baku kick right into his fucking head. Shh. She beats the shit out of him for a few minutes. Yeah. She almost kills him. Dude, if it's not, if it wasn't for fucking all the idiots running up and being like, Chun Li, we're going to save you, she would have beat the fucking shit out of him and killed him. Yeah. We're here to save you. What are you doing? What? You fucked it up. And apparently he has like emergency uh, gas chamber in his fucking quarters because he goes into like this glass room and gasses everybody and they get fucking captured again for the fucking third time. Bison's panic room. <laughs> He's a Bond villain at the same time. Oh yeah, he's Bond villain as hell. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, we um we kind of we didn't address the fact that uh, Ming Na Wen is Chun Li, and she's popped up in a shitload of stuff in the last ten years. Well, she's Mulan. Agents of Shield as well. What? What are you talking about? That show never happened. Um. <laughs> oh, I loved Agents of Shield back in the day. Ah, <laughs> tried. Um. And she's in, I think, Star Trek Discovery for a bit, too. She's good in this. Uh, she's the third top build, and I think she kind of deserves it. I mean, who else would you really put behind Raul Julia and John Claude besides her? Oh, no, yeah. totally. Kylie Minogue for her three lines of dialogue. I'm a singer, and I was in Biodome. Yeah. I'm Australian. <laughs> but I have a British accent in this movie? Yeah, she's Cammy. I keep thinking I dreamed Cammy into the movie, like she's not actually there. It's just something I imagined. She's just there to say a couple things like, we gotta go and get out of here and get over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying here. Yeah, welcome. I, she's she's just there to quip with Chun-Li. That's basically what she's there for. Yeah. So then Bison's back in his main gear, and uh, he goes to essentially accept the, the money, assuming he won. And uh, nope, nobody's delivering the money. So uh, he's like, fuck this. Kill the hostages. <laughs> he checks his bank account. There's, yeah, yeah. His Swiss bank account. Well, there's a part where, like, Guile infiltrates in... They they blow up the uh you know the the boat with a bunch of uh stock footage of mines. <laughs> they use a bunch of stock footage. 
when he uses the literal fucking joystick and he hits the buttons from the arcade machine. And and Guile sneaks in and his uh, he meets up with with Blanca, <laughs> and his only answer is, uh, "I'm gonna blow his head off." Oh <laughs> my! Gonna... Okay, yeah, he's like, "Hello, friend. My only option is to mercy kill you." I'm going to kill you, Charlie. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you in the brain. Charlie, you're a monster now. I have to put you down. He doubles down like a second later when like he's someone's uh, Dawson's like, he's just a man. He's like, you call this human? I'm like, wow, you're a piece of shit, Kyle. <laughs> That's your friend. He's like, you have no right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I played Gandhi once. Because we also do see as the movie's kind of progressing that this guy, even though he doesn't act quickly enough, he kind of like... While one of the other workers isn't paying attention, he changes the protocol from, like, this, like, people dying and all this evil shit that it's making him watch 24-7 to, like, happy stuff like Martin Luther King saying his I have a dream speech and flowers and... Yeah, and puppies. And marriages. Nice stuff. Yeah, marriage. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the progress bar that shows that he's half evil and half good. <laughs> He's like 49% evil, <laughs> but he's 51% not evil. You can't trust him. <laughs> like, he's not evil enough to, like, just, like, go rage out and kill Guile, but he's also, like, nice enough now where he knows that he's an abomination. Yeah, yeah. He's, well, he's fucking Raul Julia's monster, dude. Frankenstein makes another monster. Well... <laughs> I, I love I love that he looks like the 60s Hulk with, like, Doc Brown's hair. He looks ridiculous. He looks worse than Lou Ferrigno's makeup, and that was in the fucking 70s, dude. Yeah. Yes, it looks god-awful. It's pretty rough. Whoever said that was okay is a fucking idiot. Sorry. So then Bison, he, he wants to call up Blanca because he's going to have Blanca be the one to kill all the hostages. And nope, Guile goes in the tube, and Bison's like, open up my tube, welcome to your destruction. And then Guile jumps in the air, like 50 feet in the air, does a flying kick at Bison. Yeah, he does a Liu Kang kick. Yeah. <laughs> he jump kicks across a room. <laughs> Hang on, we, we missed one of my favorite parts of the whole movie. And when Guile's coming in in the fucking boat, he like transmits into fucking Bison's hideout. And he's like, this is the collection agency, and your ass is over." Yeah, and your ass is, yeah. This is the collection agency, Bison. And, and Bison turns to Sagat, West Studio, and goes, I guess you didn't see that, did you? And he puts his hand over his eye. <laughs> to ingratiate his spies with you. <laughs> He's he's not dead. It was a foss, you fucking idiot. And then he comes in and he jumps a million feet in the air and fucking flying kicks Bison off his fucking Koopa teacup. <laughs> I was I will say that this is where a point in the movie where like the fight, the choreography, the action, the fighting kind of gets a step up because like all the editing around Raul Julia, I didn't even notice half the time, even though I knew it was there. It looks pretty good. Yeah, Jean Claude looks like he's like subdued. Ten thousand dollars worth of cocaine a week, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you think he'd be like all jittery. And crazy and he's very, he's like moving slowly sure like the, like it's almost like the stunt guy like didn't know the moves uh just put me on these wires and spin me around i'm not acting he's not <laughs> grinding his teeth or anything like that I'm, I'm on fucking i'm on uppers man let's do this i'm going to do <laughs> fucking 12 flash kicks so what west duty sagat and uh vega they're gonna go get revenge on ryu and ken who are now like free and uh it kind of annoys me that West Duty basically just looks like a fucking cholo the entire movie. That he's just like, he's just wearing a fucking button up shirt and some fucking suit pants. He never wears those Mai Tai uh, shorts, but I guess that's not the character in this. I think, I think what bothers me the most, I, does he have like red bands on his hands? I wish he had like the white tape. Like, yeah, that did I will say me. the first thing he does in that fight is grab someone in a clinch. So I thought that was really nice. Uh, I do like their fight, though, with those two versus Ken and Ryu in the uh, locker room. It is probably my favorite part of the movie. It is mine because the movie is like, goes real fucking real shit. Watch this real quick. And then, like, the movie goes to, like, 15 for five minutes. There's, like, four fights going on. Fucking E-Honda breaks through a fucking brick wall and grabs Zangief and body slams him through a secret door in the floor. And they, f and they fall onto Bisonopolis. <laughs> I think that was supposed to be his move where he, like... Uh, see, I'm trying to remember the timeline on this because now I've played so many of the other games since then. 
But it's like, I want to say E Honda has a move where he like jumps in the air and comes down real fast. I think it was like, supposed to be like that, like a body slam kind of move. I guess so, yeah. Well, there's also like, uh, there's a bunch of cartoon sound effects at these parts. Yeah. Like there's, uh, you know, uh, uh, Balrog does his wind up and it does like the, uh, the the road runner yeah <laughs> speeding up and then there's a part where like they're fighting the bison troopers outside and they're all like in the gunfights and they throw a grenade and one of the bison troopers does the goofy yell yes <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> i do think it's kind of hilarious though that uh e honda just like rips his shirt off and he basically looks like what you would expect except samoan but Balrog, they're like, ah, uh, even though he's in this life or death situation, uh, we got to give him the boxing gloves and his uh, purple jumpsuit. Yeah, I don't know where he gets all that too. Like he just has it on eventually. Why? That just makes me think of fucking in One Piece in the Impel art in the Impel Down arc when Crocodile's like a prisoner and they break him out and then he just has like his fucking like gangster gear back on. It's like, where? the fuck did he get that but okay he looks cool who cares <laughs> what a missed opportunity is to not show balrog moving through his daily life with his boxing gloves on all the time yeah <laughs> while well, he's shooting uh, <laughs> shooting video for chung lee he's got the he's got the gloves on all right we, i think we got the shot i can't turn the camera off sorry chung lee it just drops it you ever see the com uh the cartoon when he's like on the computer and he's typing with the boxing gloves on oh my <laughs> god i forgot about that I was going to say he's like making coffee and like dinner with his boxing gloves on, like he's trying to use a fork and shit. And then we have, uh, I guess obviously the main fight is Guile versus M. Bison. But uh, yeah, we do have all that other stuff going on simultaneously. There is there is so much shit happening. Like, the, so the, the army is invading uh, the B Bison, Bison stronghold and fucking Bison's like, Oh, well, they're here. I guess this is the end. We shall face it together, DJ. And he just, like, walks out of the... Miguel Nunez just, like, sneaks out of the room. You always say, like, the stoicism of a true warrior. Yeah. And he just walks away. <laughs> and he doesn't just get up and walk away. He, 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 like, backs up, turns around and goes, like... Should I? Yeah. And takes his time slinking out of the room while Bison <laughs> is just transfixed on these monitors. <laughs> Come out from behind your curtain, wizard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're already dead inside my mind, Bison. <laughs> so, so yeah, like, the, so this is basically the, the end fight between Bison and Guile. And then, like, we just get these quick cuts. Fucking, uh, what's his name? Sawada? Sawada's there? Yeah. For, like, a second, and he's speaking Japanese because I guess they were just like, fuck it, just have him speak Japanese. Probably. It's so they could make a bad Godzilla joke because it's the Japanese people noticing Zangief and Honda fighting with, Jap with yeah. Godzilla sound effects, knocking over the Bisonopolis fucking... How did they add those sound effects in? Because they're watching it on, like, a monitor. <laughs> But it has Godzilla sound effects. So it's like, did someone add those in or are those like an algorithm or something that Bison just has? As if to say like Japanese people have something that they can just program into like the TV that has that. <laughs> they have a Gojira babblefish in their ear. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a soundboard. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we also, I, it's not exactly this scene. It's towards the end of these fights, but we do actually get to see E Honda's 100 hand slap, which I actually thought looked pretty good. Yeah, you see everybody's uh, special moves here. Like uh, you have the 100 hand slaps, you have Ryu and Ken's fight where Ryu does a Hadouken kinda. And yes. Ken does a Shoryuken kinda. Oh, that's the laziest Shoryuken I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, it's just. Like, he stands there, punches, and turns in a circle. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Ken finishes them with a, uh, with a, Touch back to bird kick. Yeah, yeah, the, the spinning bird kick or whatever the fuck it's called. It's the uh, hurricane kick. Oh, yeah, excuse me. Uh, duh. <laughs> spinning bird kick is Chun-Li, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we said a little a few minutes ago that this this fight is Austin, particularly the ones like all the action had between Vega and Ryu is yeah. suddenly deathly serious and like the tone doesn't really match anything else in the movie and suddenly like this is now like a death battle in the middle of this fucking ridiculous G.I. Joe romp. Like it came out of nowhere and it was really welcome. The music too, the score changes and everything like that too. They're the only two that actually fight. 
in the whole movie, really. It, the only thing that bums me out is that you don't get that Sagat versus Ryu fight, but the characters don't really follow that uh, rivalry in the movie, so... Yeah. It, it's it's kind of like with Mortal Kombat where we were talking about we want that Sub-Zero and Scorpion fight, but it's, you know, hand-waved away why that doesn't happen, and I'm kind of okay with it in this movie because the stuff with Vega is really good. Yeah. So, uh, Jean-Claude fucking kicks uh, bison into a fucking uh into his like flying teacup thing and he gets like electrocuted and now he has electric power <laughs> <laughs> i do love though how uh guile calls uh cammy and is like yeah bison he's one dead son of a bitch <laughs> yeah he's like i'm only half dead bison all dead. <laughs> he, he's all dead. And then his fucking computer has like a backup uh, <laughs> signal, like when his heart stops beating, that like rejuvenates him and shoot and shoots him full of a, adrenaline. It resuscitates him. And he like fucking rises up off the ground behind uh, John Claude, and John Claude's like, uh oh, what the fuck? And <laughs> Ralph Julie's just like, this is merely superconductor electromagnetism. I use it to bring my monster back to life. Surely you've heard of it. It levitates bullet trains from Tokyo to Osaka. Uh, it resurrects the dead. So then he's now he's flying and he's doing basically it's like his charge uh, uh, drill attack or whatever it's called. Psycho Crusher. Yeah. Psycho Crusher. <laughs> I love his little light up boots. I love them. Yeah. Yes. I love this whole scene because it's just basically an excuse for Raul Julia to fly around a room and punch on Jean-Claude, whilst also, like, Shakespeare acting the whole time. Oh, my God. <laughs> you came here to fight a madman, and instead you found a god? Yeah. <laughs> found a god? Keep your god. In fact, this is a good time to pray to him. Yes. <laughs> so excellent, like, the, the transition between lines, like, just... Excellently written. Stephen D'Souza right there. Oh, man. <laughs> What's that fucking line he drops? He's like, he's like, Lucifer fell from the heavens like lightning. Oh, uh, yeah. What's it called? And and I beheld Satan as he fell from heaven <laughs> like lightning. Excellent. Just so good. <laughs> so good. I do laugh, though, when Guile's like, I thought we were having a fight just man to man, no weapons. And he's like, ah, eh, fuck it. He just starts shooting electricity at him out of his hands. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fucking, this is merely superconductor <laughs> electromagnetism. <laughs> Does M. Bison seem like an honorable guy, Guile? Come on. <laughs> he tried. So then Guile flash kicks him twice in the face, and then, uh... Just, uh, I forget exactly how he does it. I think he does another flying kick into Bison midair. He does, like, one of those, like, those patented, like, Jean-Claude Van Damme, like, roundhouse from three different angles. Yeah, it's the same kick, like, three fucking times. Kicks him into a bunch of TVs and he explodes. <laughs> That's it. Not only does he explode, but he sets off a chain reaction that ends up causing the entire base to self-destruct. <laughs> They also keep showing his, like, corpse ass first in this pile of busted TVs, <laughs> and it's just blowing up and sparking and sh fucking lighting on fire. Like, the TVs were propane-powered, so they, once they blew up, they just ignited. Yeah. They were hooked to the gas line or something. <laughs> That's like Orca logic. I also love how Vega gets beat in his fight, but Sagat just kind of like gets roughed up. So so Vega, I guess, is just dead, but Sagat gets the hell out of there with DJ carrying off this trunk full of uh, bison bucks. <laughs> they just hold on Vega's butt after he gets beat. They're just like, look at his butt. Vega wakes up eventually and just explodes with the rest of the building. Oh, yeah, he's <laughs> dead. He's like, what happened? I got hurricane kicked and then, oop, and then everything explodes. Yeah, he dies with uh, Blanca and uh, Dr. Dalzum, who's now lost all his hair, and I read that there was supposed to be a scene where he, as kind of like in, in a fit of rage because he didn't do anything until it was too late. Shaves his head? I like, ripped his hair out, but I read that anytime there was a delay in the production, the director like ripped another page out of the script and was like, see, now we're not behind. <laughs> Behind, and then it caused <laughs> holy shit i can agree with yeah it caused all these issues in uh post when he was like oh shit now this scene doesn't make any sense now we have to do reshoots yeah because there's the scene where i i think uh the the guy who's like guarding dalsim knocks him into the machine that is right with the, and he and he gets the mutagens dumped all over him yeah 
and they don't even follow up on that. Yeah, like he's not. I, I guess like I don't know if he was supposed to be stretchy after that. The the funny thing is if you if you look at the publicity stills that they made, Dallas him the only publicity still they have of him is him like holding his head like he's got a headache, and he's in the chains. <laughs> But he looks like, uh, you know, Psyduck from Pokemon? Yes. <laughs> Where he's like always holding his head. That's Dalsim. And then and then Wes Studi too is like shirtless, but he's wearing like Dockers. So he just looks like someone's shirtless dad. And that's the, the those are the publicity stills that they made of them. Yoga Flame? <laughs> I kind of wish. I know that we, we talked about why they didn't do this, but if they could have just focused on like six or seven of these characters instead of all 16 and what they could have made. Uh, yeah, I guess. What's Capcom for you? They're like, no, you have to have everyone in it. Yeah, it's too much. And they decided to make it at a time where like, you know, Turbo or Super and Turbo just came out. So like, and, you know, they're like, oh, by the way, Cammy, DJ, T-Hawk and uh, Fei Long. And they did, you know, they were like, fuck Fei Long. But <laughs> <laughs> right. who is he? Bruce Lee? Boring. They got everybody else in there. That's a lot of characters. Thunderhawk. Uh, so yeah, let's not forget about his hostages. We got to get them out. So right, <laughs> get these hostages out, and then it's just like, you know, the self destruct sequence, and they're all running out and making quips, and it's hilarious. Well, we get the final uh, moments of E Honda versus Zangief, and Chung Li's like, "We got to go," and then Honda's just like, "Ah, yeah, it's been fun, pal, but uh, gotta go." <laughs> Sorry, bro, can't play no more. <laughs> Zangief has a face turn. He's like, "You know what? I've learned the error of my ways." Well, Zangief, he sees uh, Miguel Nunez trying to run out, and he's like, wait, what are you doing? And he's like, yeah, you know, Bison was a bad guy. And he's like, wait, really? Wait, Bison was bad guy? Why did you serve him? Because he paid me a freaking fortune, man. Yeah, he paid me a fucking shit ton of money, man. <laughs> you got paid? Fucking voodoo magic, man. That Yeah. Yeah, and then Zangief's like, uh, you got paid. And then I guess now he's like a good guy because he realized he was getting like fucking the wool pulled <laughs> over his eyes. <laughs> Zangief then goes to prison for his war crimes <laughs> <laughs> after all of this. <laughs> Even though he saves everybody. And then he be, he picks up a cannibalism problem while in prison. Somehow doesn't get his sentence uh, extended, but he ends up with the Sawyer family somehow, some way. <laughs> Picks up his chainsaw. Yeah. So then Dalsum stays behind with Blanca so that they basically can commit suicide because Blanca doesn't want to exist and Dalsum has regrets for what he did. Dude. What a fucking bummer of an ending for this little story going on. Yeah. Guy's like, come on, Charlie. Charlie, we got to get out of here, Charlie. You and Dalsum will go together. And he's like, he's like, I'm I'm a monster. I can't live. Yeah. Arr, I can't. Arr, arr. Arr, Billy, I can't come with you, Billy. I gotta die. <laughs> they embrace. Blanca and Delsim embrace while the fucking walls fall in <laughs> around them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the thing that gets me is like, I know that Guile is the main character. John Claude's the main character. But it's like, literally, they have like the cliche, like from Spaceballs countdown, where it's like, 10, 9. Yeah. And we get down to 1, and Guile is still kind of like milling around in the fucking headquarters as it gets to 1 and starts exploding. <laughs> there is no fucking way unless he entered a portal we're unaware of that he survived this explosion. He shot a bunch of sonic booms and then got out. Yeah. <laughs> unless that hallway led to a fucking fallout <laughs> shelter, like, because his escape plan is just to duck down some random corridor. Yeah. Like, it does, you don't know where he's going. I like Kieran's theory, though. He just, he, he's like Godzilla. He flew. He just fired a bunch off in a row. It blasted him <laughs> into the air. He started flying. <laughs> yeah. I sonic boom my way into safety. Flash kick and sonic boom. Over and over again. This one's for you, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> he comes walking out of the fucking... They're like, oh my god, Kyle's dead. And Zangief's like, he was a tough guy. He was a good warrior. He was a true warrior. A true warrior princess. And uh, Kyle's like, hey, why is everybody crying? I'm fine. Look at me. Yeah, not a scratch on you, Kyle. That's weird. Yeah. Why is everyone crying? Oh, we just found out about what happened to Wes Studi and DJ. They got fucked over. They just had bison bucks. He hits on Chun-Li and then <laughs> they yeah, basically strike a pose. And <laughs> Oh, this is the scene where he grabs Kylie Minogue by the chair chin seductively oh yeah he's like my trailer's over there it's just about that time yeah and she's like tear gas sir on the way out <laughs> tear ass uh, yes <laughs> they use tear gas too man everybody's going to prison yeah <laughs> So then they, they all line up while West Duty's screaming into the air, MY MONEY! <laughs> <laughs> and 
and they do their win poses as the fucking Street Fighter logo like kind of shoots into the screen and uh, the movie fades out. Man. Yeah. So also too, you know the uh, the radio guy they have Ugh. is uh, is the dude from. So it's the guy. Originally, they wanted to get Robin Williams. To do like Good Morning Vietnam. Fuck you. Yeah, Robin Williams was too expensive, so they got the actual dude that did uh, the Good Morning Vietnam, like the movie that it's about. Right. The guy that it's about, they got him because he was cheaper. That's that's what it is. You're fucking kidding me. He's the guy that uh, did the Good Morning Vietnam, like in real life. That's him. <laughs> I suppose we'll settle with the real guy. And he does like what? Good morning, Shadaloo or some shit he says? Yeah. Yeah, good morning, Shadaloo. I know we 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 kind of glossed over that because it was just one of those weird fucking things like why is this even here? And to know that is even dumber. Like <laughs> like why would what is the purpose of that? To get to get that guy in there, like even even to get Robin Williams in the first place as the joke, like that's not even. Uh, yeah, it serves no master. Like there's no reason for it to be there. It's dumb. Spare no expense. <laughs> Spare no expense. <laughs> it's just like the guy that did uh, the you know, played thing, and then he came back for Idle Hands. He was just he had the exact uh, <laughs> right job description. He can move those hands and fingers and <laughs> thumbs perfectly. And that voice you're hearing is the Viet Good Morning Vietnam guy. Spare no expense. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I I do like that they put the little like the four Raul you know vial con Dios at the end in the credits and stuff like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know there's an after credit sequence too. Just getting to that, but you take it. Oh yeah, so there's an after credit sequence. Bison is alive. His hand comes out like fucking super shredder out of the fucking rub rubble. They did little did they know that they would murder Raul Julia and no, this movie was never getting a sequel. Um Here's the thing. Well, two things. First of all, that whole fucking place exploded into nothing, and they show, like, an interior shot where, like, there's still, like, a whole room still intact. <laughs> um, and he, like, pulls his hand out or whatever. Where the TVs were, too. Fools, the central room was the bomb shelter. <laughs> we just had all these flammable TVs everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the end of the inglorious bastards in there. Oh man! <laughs> so and then you know that's it. So so uh, is this is this a fatality or a friendship? Uh, what, what are we getting here, fellas? Um, okay, it's a friendship. Uh, I liked it despite the fact that like I was suffering through half of it with a fucking headache. And it's like <laughs> I was like I'm trying to do this objectively, and you're making a hard movie. Um. <laughs> There's a lot of silly shit. There's almost too much silly shit. Um, Van Damme doesn't give a fuck enough to be there mentally or spiritually. He's just kind of there. Um, but God damn it, is Raul Julia just like a fucking ball of lightning the entire time? A ball of lightning! <laughs> um, the entire time, and he's fucking mesmerizing to look at half the time. Um, it's, it's stupid. It's a terrible adaptation. If I had to grade it on that scale, it's probably one of the worst, but... It's really fun, and I think time has only been kind to this. It's like the Mario Bros. movie, just ages into this fucking circus. It actually did super well, this movie. It, it wasn't a bomb. It, it, it made like three times what it was made for or some shit like that. Oh, did it? Oh, it's a friendship for sure, for me. <laughs> no, I didn't expect this at all. I, I love this damn movie. Um, I, I, I love this movie. It's my favorite movie. It's my top <laughs> one movie of all time. I, I watch this movie all the time. I love it. I, I it's fun. Uh, it reminds me of good times. Uh, it's not just the movie itself, but like uh, I just think of a better time, I guess. And and even when I think about like oh, in college I used to have this on all the time. Like I I love it. I I never had more fun watching a movie. I think it's just a a fun ride from beginning to end. There's always something going on. There's people doing stuff. It's just it's fun. I totally agree. Uh, this is a friendship for me. It probably, uh, what is it? Uh, I think it's Baraka who does the fucking paper cutouts of the little, the little, uh, the paper dolls. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, because that, that right there kind of encapsulated it. It's just like the silliest shit. Um, but it's, it, it is a ton of fun, right? Uh, <laughs> I wish there was a little bit more street fighting TM like happening in it. Uh, I, I don't need a lot. There's like, I think there's too many like shootouts, like gunfights and shit like that. Like I'd mm -hmm. much rather see 
uh, more characters interact with each other and just beat the shit out of each other, even if we have like round ones and twos and things like that, which we kind of get with Ryu and Vega and Sagat and Ken and stuff like that. Um, but I, it, it's a good time. I like Mortal Kombat better. I've, I think I've seen Mortal Kombat more than I've seen Street Fighter, but I like I like this movie. It's it's I, fucking Jean Claude is hilarious. His delivery of everything is just so fucking like yeah, unbelievably like phoned in. <laughs> and right after Raul Julia dies, or like you know the the Bison dies, he goes like Bison, you're off the air. You're <laughs> off the air. <laughs> Bison, and it's eighty yard in so bad. He's like diving away. <laughs> Bison, you're off the air. So like, so like that con- contrasted against like Raul Julia just giving it a hundred and ten thousand percent. Um, it's just so fun, and even the tertiary characters are a ton of fun. Like I love Zangief and DJ. Uh, they they provide some of the the a lot of the laughs on the sides for me, and um. And yeah, that's I, I mean, there's not much else to say. Uh, it's a Street Fighter movie. And oh, that's what I will say. The last thing. It's very colorful and it's very cartoony, just like the game. Um, and I feel like that it really works for what they're going for here. Because again, it's like that cheesy kind of G.I. Joe kind of shit. Yeah, I think I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, definitely a friendship. I I said earlier in this episode that this was the movie that I went back to a lot as a kid, so I think this is the old uh, Raiden friendship where he summons Kid Thunder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in this case, it's like I'm Raiden and Kid Thunder's young Sean, and we're like kind of hanging out and enjoying this movie together. <laughs> nice. I will say uh, I agree with Joe. I do think Mortal Kombat is better. I think it holds up a lot better, and uh, there are less parts of that movie that I'm cringed by. Uh, however, I th- this movie is just so much fucking fun. I-, I don't know. It's one of these oddball movies that, you know, maybe if I didn't have the nostalgia for it and uh, thinking back to when I was watching this at- as a kid at my grandmother's place in Florida, uh, maybe I wouldn't like it as much. And uh, But with that said, like, it's just, this is kind of like a Mario Brothers situation where it's like it's nothing like the fucking game, really. Even though, like... I say that, but they went out of their way to show moves from the game, which Mortal Kombat did a little bit of, but not... I feel like it's a little bit more egregious, for lack of a better term, in this movie. Obviously, you have Johnny Cage's shadow kick and, you know, Scorpion with the spear, but uh, beyond that, it's like you have... Well, Liu Kang has some shit, but generally speaking, there's... And Sub-Zero. Liu Kang does a fireball and a and a bicycle kick. Yes, but that that's pretty much it. In this movie, you got 100-hand slap, you got sure hugans you got hadoukens in some some capacity you got kind of a hadouken you have a white a white flash of a screen and the hand motion yeah <laughs> the fucking flash kick i like that e honda fight just because it's very visceral even if they have the bad godzilla joke in there i would have loved though to see zangief do some kind of spinning power bomb on fucking Zan- on, <laughs> on honda that would have been kind of cool they should have did that into the fucking floor man yes that would have been sick but uh yeah i don't know check this movie out if you haven't watched it in a while and don't go into it just assuming it's going to be bad because i feel like that's a bad frame of mind to put yourself in sure uh go into it with a very open mind and i think you'll enjoy it and if you don't well don't blame us. We all liked it. So, <laughs> yeah. If you if you really want to watch it and think it's great, watch Chun Li first. Watch the uh, the the Legend of Chun Li first. <laughs> That's a great idea. And then watch Street Fighter the movie, and you'll see that they could fuck it up way worse than they did. Oh yeah. Uh, if you want to start on a high note, watch this first. If you want to start on the low note, start that first. But uh, that that might have to happen. Just uh, turn turn your brain off. Kick a couple brewskis or a fucking Jaybird and uh, or a Bull Boy and hit it up. It's fucking it's a good time. Yo, and if you guys ever want to, uh, if you guys do Legend of Chun Li, please, I'd love to talk about oh. Legend of Chun Li <laughs> at some point too. <laughs> I, it could it could be on the roster at some point. <laughs> yeah, let me know for sure. <laughs> totally, man. Uh, so yeah, Kieran. Uh, so where, so where can everybody find you? Uh, I'm on uh, Twitter. Uh, it's at Kieran with five E's, K I five E R N. Uh, Twitch, K I five E R N, <laughs> and uh, Cinemassacre. I'm on that. Take a look. Awesome, yeah, definitely, definitely go check out their streams. What do you, what are you streaming next? Uh, I'm gonna be beating Metal Gear Solid, 
probably tomorrow. And then uh, after that, I'm probably going to be doing the series like uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, 3, 4. Oh, sick, and dude. Probably back to Resident Evil at some point, too. I don't know if I'm going to play the new one, but uh, on stream, at least, I might play that by myself and then play it eventually on stream. But I might enjoy that one myself. That might be a, an alone time kind of game. Oh yeah, man! You got to you got to nestle in there and get spooked without having to commentate. <laughs> yeah, I want that vampire mommy to step on my face. <laughs> Sign me up <laughs> twice. <laughs> I saw an article about that on Kotaku. I don't think they actually were the ones that wrote it, but they shared it. Where some guy did a video. Uh, explaining how if you actually did that based on like how heavy this person is supposed to be, this vampire woman, uh, what is her name? Lady Demetrius. Oh, Lady Demetriscu, yeah, or Demetriscu or something. Yeah, that that you would just your face would literally be crushed into dust because she's yeah. so heavy. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I I am fucking that. I'm that picture of Alan Grant on her ass like the Triceratops. Oh, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> I I am definitely going to be the uh, Ethan Hunt type character who is just going to, or whatever the fuck, is it Ethan Hunt? Is that, am I right? That's, uh, what's it called? In Mission Impossible. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Ethan whatever from this series. The main character. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to put myself in his shoes and he does not want to get caught. I'm going to be bolting to the safe room <laughs> as fast as possible <laughs> if I see her coming towards me. Uh, but enjoy. I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, we, we, we will. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, so this is the last episode of our Super Combat Fighter Double Dumpster Edition Turbo. So we still got that one prize pack kicking around. Do not miss that. Make sure you head over to that Instagram. You're going to like that photo. You're going to share that photo. And you're going to hashtag it MDVG giveaway um, and tag a friend. Now... We've seen you guys, and we've uh, we've seen you all. You, everybody enter, and it's been awesome. But you got to make sure you share that post um, because one. So if you like it, tag a friend and share it. That counts as one entry for you, and you'll get thrown in the the uh, chalice of champions and uh, randomly picked for that sweet prize pack. And uh, you get uh, and don't forget, you get the authentic Genesis uh, case and cartridge with the uh, with the Super Combat Fighter artwork from David DeForn. Uh, Davy the Scaredy Cat to form. You get a t-shirt, you get a sticker pack, you get a whole bunch of cool shit, enamel pin with some other goodies that we're not, we didn't kind of post on the post, but there's going to be some good stuff in there. And if you ever won, if you've won stuff from us before, you know that it's going to be full of good shit. So definitely go do that. Yeah. And uh, we should have by now, not as of this recording, but as of this release, uh, put up our uh, ripe review of the new Mortal Kombat. Mm -hmm. We're all going to be uh, checking that out. So you would have already heard our opinions by now, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, we also just did that stream uh, of uh, Future Cops uh, with our patrons. So if you want to get on the one, on the one for next month, head over to that patreon.com slash movie dumpster. And if you miss it, you can actually rewatch it too. Yes. And it's called it's Future Cops, a.k.a. Super School Tyrant. And it's a Chinese uh, Hong Kong produced uh, Street Fighter ripoff that includes characters from Street Fighter and Dragon Ball Z. Wow. Yes. Uh, it's something else. It's uh, amazing. And uh, speaking of Patreon, we always love to thank our patrons and everyone for listening. So we'd like to give a shout out to Hunter Davenport, Brendan Lemune, The Autistic Gamer 89, Christopher, Jacob Chavez, Leonardo, Roberto, Talavera, Barocio. Man, I try to come up with something for this one, but I truly have nothing. So just Gorlami, there you go. Gor <laughs> Wait, wait. Gorlami fell from the heavens like lightning. <laughs> Gorlami. <laughs> you son of a Gorlami. He's going to hit that son of a bitch Gorlami so hard. The next Gorlami wannabe is going to feel it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Amanda Tweed. Joe has a mustache. Dustin Elkins. Nick Lowry. Serge Murillo. Matt Collins. Lucio Fulci's butt. Julia Lockwood. Kyle McDonald. Nicholas Walters, Daniel Perhaps, Jacob Fonsbeck, Patrick Farmer, Tony from Hack the Movies, C.B. Smith, Arlen Haro, John, we, we still don't know, is that John Hurt? Let us know, please. It's Shang Tsung, we, we, we already figured that out in the last episode. Oh yeah, or Gunner, it could be Gunner Henson. <laughs> uh, Jenna Fryer, C.J. Duke, Norman Mata, La Bernita Senorita Rico, Matt Lasky, Ken Smith, and finally Dustin Connor. 
Thank you all for your support. Thank you guys so much. Uh, and again, for no money at all, hop over to that Apple podcast, wherever you get your podcast, leave that five star review, you know, get the show into more people's eardrums. We tell you all the time, kick it up a notch, would you please? And also, we forgot to mention, uh, check out that Doom commentary, too. That's on Patreon, too. Uh, yes, that was... Uh, I never saw that movie until we did that commentary, so enjoy. <laughs> oh, I love I love the original Doom movie. Oh, dude, it was a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also do have, if you're listening to this, when it did come out, uh, April 30th, we do have our live stream uh, wrap-up coming this Sunday. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll see you then. So uh, kind of just check out the socials to find out when that is going to be. Uh, but we will. Uh, we can't wait to see you all. Yeah, and we got some good stuff kicking up for May. So stay tuned. So that's it. That's Street Fighter from 1994, directed by Steven D'Souza. If you want some more good, bad, and god awful movie goodness, head over to moviedumpsterpodcast.com and follow us on all of your favorite social media and streaming platforms. You can also head on over to our Patreon page and sign up for the two, five, or ten dollar tiers for monthly exclusive content, or drop by our merch store and grab yourself uh, some non committal swag. Yeah, and for no money at all, you can leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts to support your favorite show. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor McGraw. I, I am Kieran. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. I'm sorry. I don't remember any of it. You don't remember? For you, the day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. Ha 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 ha!